Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two.
Check one, two. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. We will have graphics, I'm gonna say them though. Yeah. No, 45, we're good.
first time since May 6th earlier this year in Game 2 of the Commissioner Cup Final. A 5-1 victory for the Carolina Thunderbirds. They have made their return to the annex here in the fairgrounds in Winston-Salem for the 2023-2024 home opener as they get set to face off against the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Welcome inside the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV with you here all night long as we get set for the home opener which is finally here. First three games on the road for this Thunderbirds team. They get a split last weekend in Danbury against the reigning champions Danbury Hattricks. It was a 4-2 final in game one and then a 2-1 loss in game two. Thunderbirds then made their first ever trip to Whitville last night to face off against the Blue Ridge Bobcats and you were with us here on Thunderbirds TV last night. Apologies for all the technical difficulties that we went through last night. But we're back here at home here this evening. It was a 4-1 victory in, in the end last night for the Thunderbirds. So they were able to come away with a big victory last night, but it was a physical game. It got very chippy, especially in that middle period. But taking a look last night, it was Roman Kramer, the new guy. He just signed earlier this week back on Tuesday to a PTO. He ended up signing full-time in the middle of the week. He scored on his first shift of his first game in his FPHL career. A beautiful move on a breakaway that he was able to send the Thunderbirds up 1-0. And they will give him the lead and the lead for good. Later on, it was Dawson Baker who was able to come away with his first goal of the year, being set up by who else but the reigning FPHL MVP, Gus Ford. After Ford was able to weave through the defense and be able to drop one off to him across the crease at the last second for a beautiful tip in. Thunderbirds then in the second period, they were able to go to the power play, but it was Hunter Hall who came away with, for Blue Ridge with, the, with a shorthanded goal. He was able to capitalize off a turnover and be able to go all the way down and be able to beat Mario Cavalieri, but that was the only time that Cavalieri was beat on the evening as he saved 30 of 31 shots. So with a 2-1 lead, it was Joe Kennedy on the power play. Kennedy, he had the lone goal last Saturday in Danbury. And then in the second period this week, he got assists uh, from Peter Panacek as well as Jan Slot. But it was a beautiful move as he went between the legs and was able to backhand one that was able to beat Christian Pavlos, the netminder for Blue Ridge. High glove side as it went bar down. That made it 3-1. And then right before the end of the second period, it was Roman Kramer once again on a tip in from the slot that was able to make it 4 to 1 but also when that happened it broke loose. Everything started to come and there was fights after the horn sounded and it resulted in now two Thunderbirds being out tonight. One due to those fights at the end of the period and then one other as well. Earlier today the FPHL announced that Ford Peter Panacek he would be suspended for tonight's game due, uh, due to being an aggressor. So he had, is suspended for tonight's game as well as his fellow check line teammate not Jan Salai but Yeri Pestuka. He is out tonight due to an undisclosed injury. So two thirds of the check line are out, so that means the two rookies uh, in, in Kessler Sky as well as Dominic Dumas, they're going to have to come up with a big, big performance tonight as they are joining Jan Salak on that second line this evening. But last night, the 4-1 to victory. The Thunderbirds already with six points here this year. They're trying to make it nine with a regulation win here this evening from the Annex in the 2023-24 home opener. It should be a great evening. It's a sold-out crowd here on opening night, and if you're not here with us at the Annex, glad to have you along for the ride here on Thunderbirds TV. We'll take a break and coming up next we'll hear from the head coach Steve Harrison hear his thoughts from last night and also hear his thoughts heading into game two this evening that's all coming up next here on Thunderbirds TV Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors mowers and more for over 43 years we stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell visit us at riddletractor.com that's riddletractor.com equipping those who get the job done here at Comtech we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. 
When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Get ready, Winston Salem. Thunderbirds pregame. Brendan Riley with you, joined by the head coach Steve Harrison and coach last night, game one against Blue Ridge. You guys came away with a 4 1 victory, really dominated all night. What did you see from your team out there? Well, you know, there were some things I liked, uh, there were some things I didn't like. I, I don't think we played uh, to our intensity. Uh, I, I think we, you know, the week before, I think we were so gung ho about keeping our intensity at a certain place. And last night, I, I we, we just weren't running on all cylinders and and you know we were lucky we got uh we got good goaltending when we needed it we got good penalty killing when we did it and, uh, and actually uh, the power play but five on five sometimes last night i just don't know if we generated and, and kept that intensity like i like it and hopefully tonight we can raise the bar a little bit and uh, i told them after the game that if we raise the bar and, and play our system then we'll be okay now last night game got pretty physical especially that back half was that kind of building up through as the game went out or those all kind of uh individual incidents that uh, that guys ended up getting the five-minute majors and heading to the penalty box? Well, I, I think, you know, if you if you look at their roster, a lot of them have either played here before or, or, or they're with us at the start of the year or, you know, they're, and everyone's looking for a job right now. It's not just, you know, you're on this team and everyone's fighting for that uh, spot and they don't want to lose it. So the intensity revved up and they know that we're playing home and home. And whenever you play back-to-back -back games, for some reason that first game is, you know, especially when you're at home and, and, and you know, we're up 4-1, you know, intensity can... Uh, uh, stir the pot a little bit and uh, we responded very well uh, you know uh, Panny jumped in boots had to jump in and uh, you know no I, I I'm I'm encouraged by our, our commitment of, of, of sticking together and that and I know that's not our main style but uh, sometimes you have to do it and as I said I give the, all the boys all the credit now do you think they that from what happened last night that physicality intensity carries over here in the game too well I, I think I don't know about the physicality I think the intensity will and, and there'll be some physicality and hopefully and then as I said just uh, just play our system so uh, I, I, I like it's gonna happen especially when you play a team and a rivalry I mean we had a great fans there last night a lot of people came to support us and and, and now well, hopefully they get bring some fans here so I think the intensity just by the atmosphere is going to rev things up, but I think among the players too, uh, uh, those guys want to show that they uh, uh, that they belong, and, and same with us. Now that first line last night, Roman Kramer in his first shift ends up getting a goal. Dawson Baker found the back of the net. Gus Ford with some assists. What would you like from the first line last night? Well, you know, they, they played well. I, I, I think in general we, we, we all played pretty good last night. I, I don't think we played as well as we can uh, uh, play, and, uh, that's my job, uh, you know, so I'm going to have to rev up the intensity a little bit here that, that we play to a higher level. And But that first line, they clicked last night, they got some points, and good for them, and, you know, hopefully they can keep the ball rolling. Try to keep the ball rolling tonight. Game two coming up in just a little bit. We'll step aside and come back with more here on Thunderbirds. We're getting coached. Thank you so much for your time, as always. Back after this here on Thunderbirds. Get ready, Winston Sales. Jennifer Saft, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in real and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints, He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts 
traveling all over setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day, and go birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-75. Welcome back to the Annex here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's the 2023-2024 home opener for the Carolina Thunderbirds. The lights have just gone down, and we are moving in on puck drop here for the start of the home slate as it's game number two of this home-and-home -home set between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Last night, it was a 4-1 to one victory up in Whitville for the Thunderbirds as they were able to come away, even with Peter Panacek getting a suspension here tonight and a couple bumps and bruises as well. The Thunderbirds are still able to come away with a 4-1 to one victory. Steve Harrison tonight, he wasn't really impressed with the team last night. He thought they left a lot out there, and now he's telling them they're in the dressing room prior to this one that they need to be ready to go tonight. They need to be fired up and that they need to be able to come out in front of what is expected to be a sold-out crowd here at the Annex for 2020 and the home opener for 2023-2024. It's the first time since May 6th that the Thunderbirds have played in front of their home fans here in Winston-Salem. They won game number two of the Commissioner Cup Final by a score of 5-1, to one. but then, of course, they went to Danbury for the final three games of that series and dropped it there. With the lights down and the team getting ready to be announced, it's time to take a look at tonight's starting lineups for both sides. First, we'll start with the visitors for the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Starting with the forwards, it will be Chris Sielek, Vlasov Vladislav, as well as former Thunderbird and longtime Thunderbird Danny Martin. He was just signed by Blue Ridge today after he was released by the Thunderbirds prior to the season beginning. He has signed with Blue Ridge, and he is in the starting lineup tonight for Wojtek Z Emlika, that coach for the Blue Ridge Bobcats here in his first season. The 28-year-old just finishing up his playing career and now turning over to being the man behind the bench. The defenseman will be David Nicoletti as well as Tristan Wells, who was with the Thunderbirds at the start of camp. He ended up being cut and now he has made his way to the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Saw him and John Butita last night. They started to scrap and Butita ended up suplexing him as Butita he said that he doesn't like to do it, but when he, when he has to, he will. And that's what he did last night as he was able to take down Tristan Wells despite almost seven inches of a height difference. And then starting in net for the second night in a row is Christian Pavlos. He saved 38 of 42 shots last night. The former Thunderbirds goaltender who was part of that 2018-19 championship team where he went 33 and two that season with the Thunderbirds. He is starting in net for the second night in a row. On the other side for the Carolina Thunderbirds, this is who they're going with in their home opener this season, sitting at two and one with six points points on the campaign through three games. It will start with the first line. That was responsible for a majority of the scoring last night. It's Roman Kramer starting at left wing. Gus Ford is at the center. And Dawson Baker, he'll start at right wing. Kramer had two goals last night. Dawson Baker had a goal. Gus Ford had an assist. Good for four points last night in the 4-1 victory. The defensemen starting this evening, the same ones from a night ago. Starting with Clay Keeley, the Claire Shulm, Alberta, Canada native. Him and his twin brother, Nate Keeley from the Calgary area out in the country in the in Canada. Keeley last night, he had a pretty good game. He's been physical all season. Then Joe Kennedy on the other side. Joe Kennedy here in his second season with Carolina. It's a goals in each of his last two games going back to the third period in Danbury last weekend. And then the power play goal last night that made it 3-1 to one at the time. He's got three points already over the first three games, playing his 52nd game here this evening and only two points away from getting to 50 in his FPHL career. The netminder for the Carolina Thunderbirds this evening. It will be the same man who's now going to be making four starts in four games. It is Mario Cavalieri, the Ontario native here in his second season with Carolina. Saved 30 of 31 last night in the 4-1 victory as he improved to 2-1 on the season. 
in his career. Now he's 23 and 6 tonight, marking his 32nd game in his FPHL career. So Cavalieri against Pavlos in the net. You got Joe Kennedy and Clay Keeley, the defenseman, Roman Kramer, Gus Ford, and Dawson Baker. The Thunderbirds will line up this like this the rest of the night. That second line, which is usually the Czech line, well, there's only one Czech Republic native on there right now, and that's Jan Salak, the big man. He'll be at left wing with Dominic Dumas and Kessler Sky joining him on the second line to, to Peter Panacek being suspended for this evening's matchup, as well as Yuri Pastuka, who's out with an undisclosed injury this evening. The third line consists of the captain, John Butita. Nate Keeley's at center, the twin brother of Clay Keeley and Jacob Schnapp. No, so only nine forwards here this evening for Steve Harrison, his final four defenseman, Gregory Felder. He'll start with, or he'll be on the second line of defensemen with Tucker Firth this evening and Curtis Hagee and Jordan Popoff. They are the final pairings here this evening in defense for the Thunderbirds this evening with the man Steve Harrison. He's the one leading the charge for this Thunderbirds team here in his first season with the Carolina Thunderbirds. A 2-1-1, 2-1-0 record so far this year after he makes his return after he won the championship with Danville back in 2016-17. Fans are still filing in as we're moving ever closer to puck drop. The scoreboard showing right now 14 minutes up on the clock. So we are starting to make our way towards puck drop. It was a scheduled 6.05 puck drop. Looks like we're going to be just a little bit delayed here. With that, we'll head to another timeout and come back with more here on Thunderbirds pregame. Go ahead. Hopefully we'll be able to have puck drop here in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Thunderbirds hockey on Thunderbirds TV. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns, right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor. And she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Hui to live a Welcome back to the Annex here in Winston-Salem. We're closing in on puck drop for the 2023-24 home opener as the Thunderbirds have made their way out of their dressing room and are now getting set to come out of the big inflatable Thunderbirds just to the left of us from our broadcast spot here high above I've side. Welcome back inside the Annex. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV. No WTOB this evening due to conflicts with Eastern East Carolina football, so only here on Thunderbirds TV this evening. 
evening. And if you're not here at the annex, it's a joy to have you along for the ride here on Thunderbirds TV. Thunderbirds again set to come out onto the ice for the first time here in 2023-2024. We'll take a look at their opponents here this evening, the Blue Ridge Bobcats. It's their first season in the FBHL, an expansion team in Whitfield, Virginia, playing at the Apex Center last night, which a lot of Thunderbirds fans were able to make their way up and go on to, to support and cheer on their Thunderbirds last night. Almost turned it into the NX North. That's what you saw on the social media outlets here for, our, for the Thunderbirds earlier today as well. But this Blue Ridge Bobcats team, one win on the season so far. They are 1-3-1 after a loss and an overtime loss on their opening weekend back against Mississippi two weekends ago on the 20, in 20th and 21st of October. Then last weekend they made their first road trip all the way up to Michigan to go see the Motor, Motor City Rockers. They ended up picking up their first win in franchise history. That was an overtime win, 5-4 to four last Friday. And then they ended up dropping the second game of that weekend set against Motor City by a score of 4-3. to three. And then, of course, last night, the Thunderbirds beating them 4-1. to one. Take a look at their top performers so far this season. Jakob Wolf, who has been a forward for them in four games. He's got three goals and three assists and six points on the season so far. Saw Hunter Hall last night. He came away with a goal that ended up making it 2-1 to one at the time. That was on the shorthand after the Thunderbirds turned the puck over in the neutral zone. That made it 2-1, to one, but Thunderbirds quickly responded with a power play goal from Joe Kennedy. And then it was Roman Kramer right before the buzzer. The buzzer went off in the second period. Vlasov Vladisov, who's on the opening line, or on the start Starting line tonight for Wojtek Zemlika. Four points on the season as well as Cody Oaks, who is Cody Oaks, former Thunderbird. He is tied for third on the team with four points this season. Tonight, the second of 13 matchups this year between the two sides. It all started last night in Whitfield. Next weekend, the Thunderbirds will head to Binghamton, New York to face off against the Binghamton Black Bears, who right now lead the whole FPHL in points. And then it will be another set against this Whitfield Blue, Blue Ridge Bobcats team coming up in two weeks' time with a home-and-home -home set once again. So one game up at the Apex Center and then another one down here as the officials have taken the ice here at opening night. And now... The mascots as well have made their way onto the ice as the Thunderbirds are getting ready to come out in front of the Thunderbirds faithful for the first time here in 2023-24. So the Thunderbirds about to come out onto the ice. I'll take a listen in live to our public address announcer, Jose Bahina.
Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day and go birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool in Cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Back here in Winston-Salem getting set for the home opener here in 2023-2024 as the Thunderbirds have just taken the ice here for the home opener this season after they've been announced by our public address announcer Jose Bahena this evening and now our junior skater as well being announced here this evening. Thunderbirds trying to come away with a sweep for the first time here this season after the 4-1 victory last night. It should be another good matchup, a physical matchup, as you saw Steve Harrison said during our pre -game, my pregame chat with him. As now, Blue Ridge takes the ice for the first time this evening. Uh, he wants the guys to bring the intensity once again here tonight, and that's what they're going to need. But I know that this crowd on hand, a sold-out crowd, only about five or six tickets were left to be sold here earlier today. Uh, and so that's a big compliment to, to you guys that have been watching throughout the season so far and have been waiting for puck drop back here at home. And, and it's been an absolutely amazing turnout here on opening night here against the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Brendan Riley here with you on Thunderbirds TV as we are just about set for our national anthem here this evening as they announce the roster tonight for the Blue Ridge Bobcats. The Blue Ridge Bobcats come into this evening at 1-3-1. Carolina at 2-1-0 as the Thunderbirds they have already this season they have Six points trying to come away with nine. If you watch the coaches show back on Tuesday, you said that these home games are points that the Thunderbirds have and should have here in front of this home crowd here in 2023-2024. And tonight's going to be a big one here this evening. We are just about set for our national anthem. Before that, we'll take a live listen in.
Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. We are finally set for puck drop here from the Annex in Winston-Salem. Game one at home here in the 2023-24 season as the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Blue Ridge Bobcats are set for puck drop here on the home slate for 2023-2024. Welcome inside the Annex. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV. An elongated pregame with opening intros and opening night. Supposed to be a 6.05 schedule puck drop running about 13 minutes behind, but we should be set for Thunderbirds hockey here from Winston-Salem. Roman Kramer, Gus Ford, and Dawson Baker, the first three forwards out there tonight. Joe Kennedy and Clay Keeley, the defenseman, and Mario Cavalieri in net. In his second season with the Thunderbirds, 2-1 and one on the season. He started all three games, stopped 30 of 31 shots he saw a night ago. On the other side, it will be Christian Pavlos in net, David Nicoletti and Tristan Wells, the defenseman, with Chris Selick, Danny Martin, and Vlazov Vladisov. In for the faceoff is Gus Ford and Chris Selick. Our official is ready, and we're underway here from Winston-Salem in 2023-2024 as Joe Kennedy will ride one off the boards and will take an early annex hop. It comes back out to center ice where Kennedy once again will play it off of the defenseman Tristan Wells before it ricochets all the way over to the far side. Now in the attacking zone and hope back out to center ice as Wells will just throw this one in on Cavalieri who goes down to the butterfly, makes the grab, and dumps it off for Joe Kennedy who plays it along the boards on the near side. Roman Kramer will give chase. He had a goal last night, just a minute 16 into the game. Nicoletti behind his own net. He's getting chased off and as Dawson Baker loses an edge right up against the boards down on the far side where the Zamboni comes out for it comes free and now up the near side. Here comes Selec. Selec trying to dance through and there's a big hit there by Clay Keeley on Danny Martin, the former Thunderbird. Smeared off here in his first shift. He'll throw it in and a pad saved by Cavalieri. Baker will flip this one back out to center ice. We're there to go after it is Ford. Ford has to get back on side but instead he's off side as Kramer tried to dump that one in and so we get our first stoppage just over a minute into this one. 18.59 left to go here in the first period. And it'll be a neutral zone faceoff just outside the attacking zone for the Thunderbirds. 
They'll bring up the second line for the first time this evening, including Dominic Dumas and Kessler Sky in for Peter Panacek and Yuri Peshtuka. The faceoff is won back to Colton McGuire. Goes back all the way below his goal line, and he'll now play it up the far side, up to the half boards for a poke check, and a huge hit by Tucker Firth. Salak's able to keep it in the attacking zone, but only for a second as it's backhanded back out, as Firth will give chase. There'll be no icing called, as Firth will angle off a man. He's still playing the body and not the puck, as now it bounces around. There's Gregory Felder, who just joined the team Wednesday morning morning from Knoxville. It pokes all the way back out to the far corner in Kessler Sky. Sky will flip one up the boards and now Jan Salak will walk into the zone. He leaves it for a man and a late offside is called and a stoppage here with 18.26 left to go here in the first. So a couple of offsides already here for the Thunderbirds here in their home opener as he'll bring up another neutral zone face off. Last night a 4-1 victory over this Blue Ridge Bobcats scene up in Whitfield. And now trying to come away with a victory here this evening and get their first sweep on the year. It'll be the first time we see the third line of forwards. Only nine forwards and six defensemen for the Thunderbirds this evening due to Pestuka and Panacek both being out. Steve Harrison carrying 11 forwards on his roster, six defensemen and two netminders. This first period is brought to you by First Bank. And for the faceoff on the far side, it and there's a tie-up, and it'll be knocked over across the blue line, and back out to center ice, or it'll be dumped in. That was Ivanov dumping it in, Hagee back to chase, he plays it on the back end to his defensive partner, Jordan Popov, plays it up to Schnapp, now quick stretch pass, Keeley all the way to Batita, he's on side, Batita at the near dot, goes to the slide, Keeley will just play one in, into the corner, Batita there to pick it up, he'll bring it back out now, and get it back to the point for Hagee, Hagee, Gliding along the blue line, skips it over to Popoff. Popoff, he tries to get a shot off. It's deflected and it will be played by Stevens all the way back out to center ice on the back end. This one going down. They're calling for icing and no call as it's waved off. A late hit applied there by Jakob Volt, the points leader. And Schnapp will dump this one in and out from his crease is Pavlas. So backhand it over into the near corner. Now here comes the Bobcats with Sealek in their first line. A good hit there by Clay Keeley. So he runs off Sealek and Kennedy's back to pick it up. Already three points this season for Joe Kennedy as he ends up losing the puck and it comes out to the near point. Tristan Wells back to the top of the slot. A shot and that one goes wide. Bangs up against the back of the cage. And now here comes Clay Keeley. A long stretch pass to Ford. This one will go all the way down. Pavlas out from his crease and he'll play it up to a four. Forward. Here comes Blue Ridge back out into the neutral zone. A backhand pass to Wells with Ford on him. He'll just dump it in and rattle around the boards. And back to pick it up is Mario Cavalieri, but actually skips over his stick and almost gets the official. A clearing attempt doesn't get all the way through. And now here come the Thunderbirds three on two with Ford and Baker. Ford walks in, shoots, and it goes just high. It comes all the way back out. And here comes Blue Ridge three on two if they hurry. But Tonic goes cross ice, a shot, and that one goes high on the near side. It'll rattle back around, and now Gus Ford up to Roman Kramer. He had two goals last night. A one-timer to Ford at the near, not a shot, and that one's deflected. One off Kramer on the far side, and it ricochets back around and back in the net, and now Wells with it once again. And that's Colton McGuire, not 444 as McGuire walks his way all the way in. Tries to step through Tucker Firth, and the puck, he tries to find one back out, and there to pick it up is Dawson Baker. He's got Matonic right there who gives chase, and as he leaves it back for Firth, as we approach 16 minutes to go here in the first period. Scoreless here in the home opener of 2023-24. Tucker Firth holds as the second line comes out for the Thunderbirds. Now Firth, he tries to get it out, but it's poked away. Puck bouncing around as Stevens got a stick there, and it comes back out to McGuire. Shot is blocked as Jan Salak now trying to get on his horse going up against Volk. He'll lose the race as it's brought back in and the puck gets poked back out to center ice and back pedaling a sucker Firth. He goes to his D partner Gregory Felder, the Switzerland native. He plays it up to Kessler Sky who plays it in into the near corner. Jan Salak battling in the corner. He's able to come away with it. He's the only one from the check line in the game today. Puck still loose in the corner. Kessler Sky now getting in the action. Saw Sky last night start to get physical as he came away with a few penalty minutes. Puck still bouncing around, comes back out to the point. Felder goes cross ice to Firth. Firth a shot, doesn't get all the way through, but it comes right back to Felder. Sends a wrister in and a glove save by Pavlos with 15, 18 left to go here in the first period. And now some extracurriculars. We saw this last night, some pushing and shoving, and that will get this Thunderbirds crowd into it. And it looks like we're gonna get our first penalty.
So it looks like the Thunderbirds are going to be heading on the power play. It's going to be Colton McGuire. He's going to head to the penalty box in this Thunderbirds power play. Got a goal last night. They're going to come out. They are one for eight on the season so far. On the other side, the penalty kill working at 88%. For the Bobcats, this power play is brought to you by Little Italy. Little Italy Pizza, it's an Italian restaurant in Rural Hall at her first fan meet and greet of the season there back on Wednesday. Gus Ford in for the faceoff as the faceoff is one up to the near side and playing it on his stick is Ivanov and he'll dump it all the way down and Cavalieri will stop it behind his own net. Looks like they call it a cross check there. As now Tucker Firth plays on the backhand of Dawson Baker. will get it across the blue line. Baker walking in to the high slot. Walking shot and a save by Pavlos with 14.57 left to go here in the first period. That will bring us to our first media timeout. An action-packed first five-plus minutes as the Thunderbirds still have a minute 40 left on the power play when we come back. Don't go anywhere here on Thunderbirds TV. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Back here in Winston Salem, Thunderbirds still on the power play for the next minute and 40 seconds after Colton McGuire went off at the 442 mark of the first period for a cross checking. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV as we're in the first period here in Winston Salem, which as always is brought to you by First Bank. Gus Ford, Roman Kramer, as well as Kessler, Sky, Dawson Baker, and Tucker Firth, the five out on the ice for the Thunderbirds. Have Volf, Ivanov, two of the four out there for the Bobcats as the faceoff comes to the left of Pavlox. Faceoff, a tie-up, it hits off the official and now be cleared all the way back down where Cavalieri will play it. And he'll play it up the near side to Dawson Baker. As Volf was giving chase before Firth now has it and he'll just wrap it back around. Baker's gonna have to retreat as now a race happens as Granquist goes into the corner, applies a check, but he's the one that ends up going down. Baker and Granquist now chatting a little bit up the near side as now Gus Ford will play it back with 113 left to go here on the two minute cross check minor against Colton McGuire. Pavlos behind his own net. He fakes out Ford and plays it to the near side and Ivanov will clear it all the way down. This will come in on Cavalieri, who gets back up quickly and fires up to Firth as Blue Ridge was going off for a change. And now the Thunderbirds bring out their second power play unit with Jan Salat, Dominic Dumas, Joe Kennedy, and Jacob Schnapp. Thunderbirds having trouble getting out of their own zone. 45 to go here on the power play. Kennedy will get it over to Dumas. Will now backtrack to his own slot and now start it back up before leaving it for Clay Keeley, the twin brother of Nate Keeley. Those two have been impressive here so far. Keeley walks in, top of the dot, but an offside is called. So Thunderbirds just a little antsy here over the first six plus minutes. 13.50 left to go here in the first 20 here in the home opener of 2023-24. Hope to be joined by former Thunderbirds forward Josh Copelinger for the second period. Hope to have him join us for the middle 20 as the faceoff comes just outside the attacking zone and it's backhanded all the way down and we'll go back. It's run their 30 seconds to go here in the power play for the Thunderbirds. Carolina this season, one for eight on the power play so far. That one goal coming from Joe Kennedy last night. Up the far side, Jan Salak walks in, gets it to Keeley in the far corner. Keeley. Now he'll try to get it back to the point. He does. Kennedy's able to keep it in as he backhands it to the far half towards the Jan Salak. Salak back to the dot. A shot from Schnapp. And a save by Pavlos with five seconds to go on the man advantage. Now Jan Salak chatting with a few bomb catch just to the left of the net. So 
So McGuire getting set to come out of the box. Five seconds left to go on his two minute minor. As Granquist and Ford are in for the draw, just to the left of the netminder, Christian Pavlos. Face off is one. Back to Baker. He'll play it into the far corner. Granquist can be the first to it as McGuire makes his way out of the box. And the penalty is killed off for Blue Ridge, who now go and try to go four on three. The near side, Ivanov, a shot from the dot. His shot save pops up around the net. And Ford's able to swat it away behind the net. Cavalier, he didn't know where it was, but Gus Ford was able to get there and knock it away. As now the Thunderbirds are going to try to clear the zone. Pop off in the near corner. Runs into Granquist, who tries to throw it on net and slide it to Stevens before Hagee was able to get there. A shot from the far half boards is blocked. Back out to the high slot. Granquist a shot, takes a deflection in front, still loose to the crease. And Cavalier is able to cover with 12.44 left to go. And some more pushing and shoving between these two sides after the whistle. So Cavalieri there, he made the initial save after Blue Ridge came into the zone. It got knocked up into the air, and Gus Ford was able to swat it behind the net. And that time, he was able to keep it in front of him, and he had a man right in front of him in white trying to poke at it. So he was able to cover, and that's what prompted his five skaters to come to his defense. Face-off down to the right of him as the face-off is, is a tangle up and coming away with it is Tucker Firth as he works his way up the near side into the neutral zone. He'll dump this one in, cross ice into the far corner. Pavlas gets a stick to it as Nicoletti just taps it along. Puck still bouncing around, comes to Schnapp at the top of the dot, a shot and a save by Pavlas. If he didn't save it, he had Nate Keeley right on the doorstep, but he will cover with 12.24 left to go here in this first period. So far, shots 7-5 in favor of Blue Ridge. Carolina outshot him 42-31 last night. Pablo saved 38-42. of Faceoff is won by the Thunderbirds, but comes all the way back out into their own defensive zone where it's played quickly, and it's a... Missed pass to Jacob Schnott. This one will go all the way down. No icing as John Petito will throw Nicoletti into the boards. And it comes down the near side to Tristan Wells. We'll send one all the way down. It hops over a, skit, a stick. And this will go all the way down for icing with 12.06 left to go here in the first 20. So the Thunderbirds with more sustained pressure. Steve Harrison prior to today's game talking with them. He said that the guys need to come out ready to go. He said there would be short shifts that they are gonna attack early on. Trying to have that come through here over this first 20 minutes and get this annex crowd on its feet. Here in a sold out crowd on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Man gets thrown out of the faceoff on as Daniel Martin now in for it against Kessler Sky. And the faceoff is won by Martin as he flicks this one all the way back down. And Joe Kennedy will go and pick it up as Blue Ridge goes off for a change. Kennedy now a big stretch pass. He was trying to get it to Dumas, who is retrieving his glove. Instead, it will be icing. And i will bring up a defensive zone faceoff for the Thunderbirds here at just under 12 minutes to go. Thunderbirds going for the third win tonight. They head to see Binghamton next week up in Binghamton Friday and Saturday from New York. Second time the Thunderbirds are heading north this season. Way north, that is. Faceoff is won by Newberg. A tie up and it comes back out to the point. McGuire keeps it in, tries for at least a second before he runs into Jan Salat as McGuire now will backtrack all the way into his own zone. But Kessler Sky comes away with it, dumps it over to Salat, gets his stick lifted, goes cross ice, and now Joe Kennedy will ring, ring this around the boards. There to pick it up is Dominic Dumas. Coming out on the near side in the near corner, he pirouettes back and now tries to throw it in front to Salat, but stepping in there was. Delcart, Igor Delcart, and now Matonic quickly up the other side, going up against Clay Keeley at the near dot, leaves it for Hall. Hall tries, dances through Keeley, throws one across the crease, and no one was home as it's now played into the far corner. Matonic now at the far half boards. We'll get poke check, puck still loose. Dumas didn't see it, and coming away with it once again is Blue Ridge. Delcart walks in, a shot, he scores. Hunter Hall, he had a goal last night and that time he's able to beat Mario Cavalieri five hole. And the Thunderbirds fall behind one to nothing. Hall last night, he got his on the shorthanded 
Going on a breakaway. And that time he was just able to swip, slip one past Mario Cavalieri. And so the Bobcats take a one nothing lead here. With 11.05 left to go in the first period. And we're back underway. It's played back up across the blue line. Grandquist walks in. He gets checked away. And now comes back out to center ice with Gus Ford. Ford will get right off at the blue line. And coming away with it now is Ivanov. He goes far side to Grandquist, who has it at the, cent at the center line before Baker. Gets a stick lifted, and now Blue Ridge with all the momentum right now and attacking. Comes all the way back down to Agnezov, the defenseman. Plays it over his deep partner, Ivanov, and now up to center ice. Stevens walks in on the near side. Tries to drop it off, and a huge hit by Curtis Hagee as he threw him up against the board. Now here comes Gus Ford. Ford leaves it. Kramer a shot, and a save by Pavlos. So far this, so far tonight, some good looks for the Thunderbirds, but Christian Pavlos has seen everything so far. So the Thunderbirds now playing from behind, looking for the equalizer. And for the faceoff is Nate Keeley, loses it as it'll be Tristan Wells in the near corner. Plays it back out to the near dot. Puck bouncing around, comes up to the near blue line. Butita is able to keep it in as he plays it all the way behind the net. Back to pick it up is Nicoletti, goes far side. Firth, he steps up on the four check, but it pops back out to center ice. As Felder will send this one back in, but only as far as Nicoletti, who has it, and plays it back out to the neutral zone. Near side, Tristan Wells here as we approach the midway mark of the first period. Under 10 minutes to go here in the first period in the home opener. 1-0, the Thunderbirds trail as the puck bouncing around at center ice. Danny Martin, the former Thunderbird, will get over to Selec, who will backhand it in, and Cavalier will play it on that patented annex hop. So here comes Tucker Firth. Up the near side, he'll dump this one in as the Thunderbirds will give chase. Goes over the stick of Pavlos, Schnapp, he's able to close off the defender there before it comes back on the near side and there to pick it up is Clay Keeley. Keeley stepping up all the way into the corner, trying to leave it for Salaka, comes in and runs through a man. He sits down, Colton McGuire, and now it'll be the first one over to the puck into the corner. Salak taking guys on, one on three. They still can't get the puck. And Salak just continues to be physical in that far corner. Puck comes out to Dumas and now still a tie it before Blue Ridge is finally able to come away with it. And coming away on the near side only for a second though as Kessler Sky poke checks it away. Throws this one, there's Dumas. He throws one on the back end and saved by Pavlis. Dumas still has it though. Back to Slock, walks in, near dot a shot. That one pokes all the way to the far half board. Joe Kennedy steps up, he'll bang this one around. Sky fakes a man out, now comes away in the near corner. Back out to the point, Kelio intentional one-timer wide. Pavlos pokes it away. Salak now trying to get it to Dumas before it's poke checked over to Clay Keeley. Keeley once again stepping up here on the four check. Puck now comes away as Delcart plays cross ice. And now here comes Blue Ridge. Their pass goes only so far as now Thunderbirds will dump this back in and go off for a change. A long, long shift there for the Thunderbirds. But a good sustained shift. And now Salak just throws a bobcat into the bench. Oh, we got a, we got a scram over on the far side. You got Thunderbirds from the bench throwing punches. You got guys falling into the bench. And this is all from the sheer physicality of Jan Salah. We saw this a bunch last night. As it looks like Schnapp, as well as Josh Newbert, tangling up over the boards. You got Joe Kennedy with this helmet off. And now we're gonna have a laundry list to try to figure out once again. We're at the under 10 media timeout, one to nothing. The Thunderbirds trail the Bobcats. We'll be right back right after this on Thunderbirds TV. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui.
So with 8.14 left to go here in the first period, the Thunderbirds trail once to nothing, and the officials are trying to clean up the penalties here. It looks like John Vatita as well as Josh Newberg have made their way into the penalty benches. At the 11.46 mark of this first period. It looks like Jan Salak's also making his way over. This will bring on a chorus of boosts. But Jan Salak earlier on in that possession took on three Bobcats by himself in the corner and did not flinch. He threw guys to the ground. He did not allow for the puck to come loose. after he ran into a man earlier on in that possession. And then as Salak was making his way back to the bench, a scrum broke out. But right now it looks like the Thunderbirds have John Batita and Jan Salak in the bench. As Josh Newberg will also take a seat. So a long stoppage here at our second media timeout of this first period. It's one to nothing, the Bobcats in front after the Hunter Hall goal at the 8.55 mark here of this first period. That's his second on the weekend. Still no announcement from the officials as they continue to clear all this up. Sold out crowd here in Winston-Salem this evening. It's good to be back home here for the 2023-24 season. And so the both sides come out four on four. Now a late man makes his way in for Blue Ridge. It'll be Stevens. So it'll be five on four and two of the penalty. So the penalty kill for the first time tonight will be the Thunderbirds. Eight for eight on the season so far. They call Jan Salak for two minutes. As the faceoff is won by Nate Keeley into the corner. Joe Kennedy gets ran up against the boards in the corner. Now another tie-up. A couple guys digging away. Coming away with it is Hall. He plays over Matonic on the near half boards. Matonic holding. Back out to the point, gets it right back. He walks in, top of the dot, plays it behind the goal, throws one in front in that one. Sails through, the Hall is trying to find a man in front. Hall plays on the backhand out to the far side to Stevens. Stevens gets ran into by Schnapp, who loses his stick. It's poked along, Kennedy can't come away with it. And now on the far side, Hall, who already has a goal tonight and two goals this weekend, plays it in the corner, Hall. We'll play it on the near side as a let's go Thunderbirds chant breaks out. Comes back out to the point. Thrown in front, a one-timer and a save by Cavalieri. And now some more after the whistle. As Jacob Schnapps right in the middle of it, but Mario Cavalieri, a big save there on the one-timer. It was a good look for Blue Ridge as it went behind the goal line all the way back out to the slot, and Cavalieri was ready for it. Nine saves on ten shots so far for Mario Cavalieri. He's been asked to do a lot more than what he did the other night. As Schnapp and Stevens continue to talk. Saw this last night. Stevens is one of the ones that was involved in the skirmish over by the Thunderbirds bench just a few minutes ago. Still a minute 12 left on the two minute minor against Jan Salak. They called it a roughing minor. They also credited John Butita and Josh Newbert with offset, offsetting roughing calls. But Salak's the one in the box as well at Butita. Faceoff is one in the neutral zone as play backtracking as Colton McGuire goes cross ice to Danny Martin. The former Thunderbird will dump this one in up on the far side and, and back to pick it up is Gregory Felder. I'll just take a huge whack. Did it take a deflection? Yes, it did, says the official down on the near side as it goes up into the protective netting. So no delay of game against the Thunderbirds. It also would have been five on three for the next 57 seconds. 7.10 left to go here in the first period. 
Thunderbirds penalty kill, trying to do more magic. As a tie up on the face off, Grandquist and Ford. And we'll reset. To the right of Cavalieri. Face off is one by Ford. A stick is tied up. A shot and a blocker save by Cavalieri. Blue Ridge still has it in the far corner as it skips over the stick of Danny Morgan and comes all the way back down to the blue line. Here with under seven minutes to go and 40 minutes to go in the two minute minor for roughing for Jan Salak. Up the near side is Smirnov at the near half boards. Into the corner, they'll play this one all the way around as Martin will go chase up to the far point. Martin whips on the pass, Schnapp comes away with it, backhands it all the way down past McGuire as they clear it and try to run off this penalty with now only 23 seconds left to go and maybe one last chance for Blue Ridge though as Smirnov plays this one, it deflects off of Schnapp, comes all the way back down and now the Thunderbirds just need to clear off 15 seconds. A long stretch pass goes all the way down, will this be icing? No it will not as it's cleared off, Cavalieri plays it off the backboards and Keeley there come away with it with 7 and 6, he'll dump this one down and it'll clear and that will kill off the 2 minute minor for Jan Salah. Lock. So back to five on five action here with 6 10 left to go here in the first period in the home opener. A sold out crowd in Winston Salem. But the Thunderbirds currently trailing one to nothing. Puck gets deflected in the neutral zone. It goes all the way down. Cavalieri back to play it into the corner. Dangerously sends it all the way over to the near half boards for Roman Kramer, who plays cross ice to Joe Kennedy. Now here come the Thunderbirds with Joe Kennedy. He walks in, top of the dot. A close angle shot goes wide on the far side and comes all the way back out. Now here comes Blue Ridge quickly. It's Metonic. He'll wrap this one around. Cavalieri is able to get it on his paddle and backhands it in the direction of Gus Ford, but there to pick it up is Sealek, who will now play it behind the net. And the Thunderbirds will hold as... Blue Ridge will go off for a change here as we approach five minutes to go here in the first period. Thunderbirds trailing one to nothing after the goal from Hunter Hall at the 8.55 mark. They can't clear. Here's a chance at the near dot. Centering pass. Martin, he forgot the puck. And coming away, then it's Ford. Here comes Kramer. Ford once again over the blue line. They're on sides to the top of the dot. Ford gets ran into the board, still able, dancing through defender, still has it. Pucked it now at his skates, it's poked around, it comes back out into the high slot as a man for Blue Ridge loses his helmet. And back to pressure was Roman Kramer, now a stretch pass taken by Curtis Hagee at center ice. Back in to Kramer, puck bouncing high up and down as Kramer now will just whack it. This one over to the far half boards for its plate to the near corner. Gus Ford though comes away with it on the near side. Back out to the boy, pop off a shot, save, rebound chance, saved by Pavlos. Christian Pablos again, another huge save, and it keeps it a 1 0 game. The Thunderbirds will reset as Curtis Hagee has it at the near dot. He goes cross ice. Popoff will play this one off the stick of Dominic Dumas before it's played back out to Popoff. Popoff. Alice this one off the short board, short glass, and it's played behind the net by Pavlas with 4.10 left to go here in the first period. One to nothing in favor of the visitors. Christian Pavlas so far has been pretty good. Up the far side, here comes Blue Ridge. Man dancing in his Stevens, throws one across the crease. It goes harmlessly, and now a man goes crashing into the near post. And the net goes off its moorings. Now it'll bring us to our under five media timeout. The Thunderbirds still trail one to nothing after Christian Pablas has been great so far tonight. Thunderbirds still trying to find a way to get past him. one nothing with 4-12 left to go here in the first on Thunderbirds TV. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us, 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. So neutral zone face-off as we get set to restart here with just over four minutes left to go here in the first period. It's one to nothing in favor of the Blue Ridge Bobcats after a goal from Hunter Hall at the 8.55 mark. 
It'll be the second line out for the Thunderbirds. As the faceoff is won by Newberg as it goes far side down to Nicoletti. It'll be dumped in. Cavalieri will leave it there. And there to pick it up first is Matonic. He gets right into it. Newberg comes away, throws a weird angled shot from behind the net. Goes off Cavalieri. Another chance goes high and wide from Tristan Wells. And the puck comes back out to center ice. And back to pick up is Hunter Hall. Puck bounces around after a good hit by Gregory Felder. There, Tucker Firth runs into Hall, a pair of 22s. As now Wells just tries to throw it on net. Hall comes away with it, walks in, tries to go cross crease. And there to take it away is Gregory Felder. And now here come the Thunderbirds. They finally get out of their zone. Kessler Sky walks in, dances through a defender, and now will play it back out to the half board. Salak there. So he gets ran into by Granquist. And now cross ice pass comes back out harmlessly to center ice. And Clay Keeley is back to reset here with three minutes to go in the first period. A uh, pass that was looking for Dumas will go all the way down. Icing is called off as McGuire plays it up to Stevens at center ice. Backhand all the way up into the attacking zone as Jakob Wolf plays it. He'll throw it in on net after a no-look shot. And there to cover is Mario Cavalieri with 2.45 left to go here in the first. Thunderbirds out shooting. Blue Ridge 12 to 8 so far. Cavalieri seven saves on eight attempts. Well, Christian Pavlos has saved all 12 he's seen so far. This face off will come to the left of Cavalieri. And in for it is Nate Keeley in this third line for the Thunderbirds, joined by Joe Kennedy and Nate's twin brother Clay. Selec was a little early on it. So he'll be warned and he'll be thrown out of the faceoff dot. And now they'll bring in Kyle Stevens instead as now another whistle before the faceoff. The official pointing at what looks like to be a Thunderbird. So it looks like Keeley's now thrown out. And now Blue Ridge was trying to get a change. So it'll be John Batita in for the faceoff against Kyle Stevens after. Both got thrown out. Face off is one back to McGuire. McGuire goes cross ice and a shot doesn't get all the way through. It's blocked at the near dot and another shot goes wide. As now coming away with it is Joe Kennedy. He'll play it with a touch pass up to Nate Keeley. He leaves it back for Kennedy plays it up the far side. Now walks in two on one. Kennedy a shot. Save. Puck still loose on the near side. But there to pick it up is Delcart. Oh, another good look for the Thunderbirds. They've had the majority of the good chances so far. A pass back out to the blue line, and now a takeaway. Sealek will flip this one in on Cavalieri, who will glove, and he'll freeze. But 2.09 left to go here in this first 20 minutes here in the home opener of 2023-24. Once again, Christian Pavlos is doing all he can. Saved 38 shots last night. Thirty-eight of forty-two. He's been good here tonight in his return to Carolina. Gus Ford into the faceoff to the right of Cavalieri. Faceoff is won by the Thunderbirds and played back to Jordan Popoff. Popoff up the near side to Roman Kramer. He'll take a long touch pass, trying to get it to Dawson Baker. It's poked by Ignesov and played up back out to center ice for Popoff to recollect once again. He has Newberg right on him at the blue line. And now the pass is taken away at center ice. Walking in his hall, a shot and a blocker save by Cavalieri. Puck still bouncing around and coming away with it is Curtis Hagee. A long stretch pass up to Gus Ford. He walks in three on one opportunity. Ford looking, centering pass and it goes wide on the near side. Oh, it's been like that all night. The Thunderbirds, another chance, but have yet to be able to finish so far. 90 seconds to go in the first period. On the far side. It's played out to center ice, and Popoff once again collects. He loses it, though. Now Selec comes away with it in the far corner. Selec, he'll stop on a dime, and now a whistle as the net comes off its moorings once again, and Tucker Firth will get it. An extra shove in there as well as Mario Cavalieri had his net come off its moorings with 1.13 left to go here in this first period. And it looks like they're going to need someone to come in and try to be able to get it back in. This ice went down about three weeks ago right after the Carolina Classic Fair that was held here at the Annex. There have been uh, Wake Forest club hockey games. There have been 
Other junior hockey games as well here at the NXT. It's not the first game played here in Winston-Salem this fall, but first professional one is now Cavalieri knocks it off the moorings once again. So Cavalieri is complaining, saying that he can't be able to get enough pressure on there and really go post to post. And so now he continues to try to get this fixed. Brand new nets as well. These nets have not been used yet this year. Now the net looks to be okay. Cavalieri looks like he's fine with his crease as he gives it a little nudge. And now he'll await a face-off to the right of him. Here with 1.13 left to go in the first period. Face-off is one, back to the point. A shot doesn't get all the way through as Felder blocked it in front. Clearing attempt by Jan Salak, doesn't go anywhere. Is now Felder playing on the backhand up the far half boards. And now here comes Salak across center ice, one on three like he did earlier in this game. Pavlos way out from his crease to play it. Plays it on the backhand as we're under a minute to go here in the first period here in Winston-Salem. Up the far side, Gregory Felder, he'll backhand this one back out to center ice before it's sent all the way back in right to him. And he'll play it back to his defense. Defensive pairing, Tucker Firth. It's the second line of D-men. They've been out there for a while as we approach 40 seconds to go here in the first period. Tucker Firth walking right through center ice. Snaps one all the way down. Dumas got a piece of it as the Thunderbirds, rather, they're going to say. They did, uh, he did not. So this will go all the way down for icing. And so we'll bring up an offensive zone faceoff for Blue Ridge with 33 and a half seconds to go here in the first 20 minutes. Thunderbirds trying to hold strong these final 33 seconds. It'll be Newberg in for the faceoff. Has McGuire on the near side. As the faceoff is won by the Thunderbirds. Before he gets taken away, right in the slide. Metonic a shot, and it goes just wide on the near side. Newberg a, a chance from a short angle. Now it takes a poke back out. Back out to the point. It's played up to the near half boards before Salat, before rather. Kessler skies that will come away with it. 17 seconds to go here in the first period. Tucker Firth will hold it behind his own net as we are under 10 seconds. One last rush for the Thunderbirds with eight seconds. First, we'll just send this one in on Pablo. He'll take this one, now play a stretch pass back out. Couple of men down there, one second left. Walking into Matonic and he runs out of time. He runs out of time there at the last second and now some more extracurriculars as Tucker first didn't take much appreciation to the late attempt. Another tie up on the near half boards. The officials in there. Doom is pulling Hall off of it. As Firth and McGuire go at it. Couple of quick jabs. Three officials in there now. But that is how the first period comes to an end. So the first 20 minutes are in the books here in Winston-Salem. It's the Blue Ridge Bobcats, a one to nothing lead over the Carolina Thunderbirds. As now we just have to wait and see if this will bring up anything. See the two captains, Kyle Stevens, as well as John Petita talking with our official this evening. I don't think this should bring anything and put anyone in the penalty boxes. The horn did sound, it was a late shot, and all Tucker Firth was doing there was protecting his goalie. That'll bring us to the end of the first period. First 20 are in the books as we've hit the intermission. It's one to nothing after the goal at the 8.55 mark of the first period from Hunter Hall. He's given the Blue Ridge Bobcats a one nothing lead. The first intermission report and an interview with the owner, Kerry Ross, coming up on the other side of this timeout here on Thunderbirds TV. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. 
From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Make Rita call. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns, right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Welcome back inside the annex here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds. We're at the first intermission here on the home opener of the 2023-24 season. It's Blue Ridge with a one to nothing lead over the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we are proud to be joined by the president and director of hockey operations and also one of the owners here for the Carolina Thunderbirds, Kerry Ross. Kerry, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it must be a pretty busy night here, sold out crowd, but thank you for taking the time and joining me here during the first intermission report. Love to be up here with you. Very happy with the crowd. Things are going great so far. Except for the score. <laughs> <laughs> that one goal coming from Hunter Hall at the 855 mark. But uh, so fourth game already this season, uh, first year for head coach Steve Harrison. Uh, how have you liked, before we start talking about the, the rest of the stuff off the ice, how have you liked the product so far on the ice this year? Um, liking uh, the way Harry coaches. I love the old school. and It's tough on the guys, and the guys are responding well, coming together as a team. So I give it a few more games and we'll get stronger. I see him progressing pretty pretty well each game. Yeah, I mean, a big one coming up next weekend as well as the Thunderbirds head to Binghamton to face off against uh, Binghamton, who have the most points in the FPHL so far. But a big night here tonight. It's been a long time. Uh, May 6th was the last home game that the Thunderbirds have had here at the Annex. But so a big night here tonight in a sold-out crowd. It, it's got to make you pretty happy that this fan base has really uh, taken to this team once again for another season. They're showing that here tonight. I, I can't say enough about our fans. Uh, Season tickets uh, have gone up by over 20%. Um, sellout, uh, this is the first time in a long, long time that we sold out on, on Friday. Normally our sellouts, we sell out midday Saturday, but we sold out yesterday. So very strong and you know the fan base, you, you can't say enough about our fans. Now, now one, one thing that you know we might want maybe next year, but I mean, five of the first six games are on the road. What do we got to do to get a couple more yeah. home games over so the first few weekends? You know, we, we, we try to, with the schedule, we do try to push games a little bit later because on Friday nights you're competing against uh, high school football and the South football is a big deal. So, you know, when we, we work the schedule, we do try to push games a little bit further into the season so that you know families here could still go out and enjoy the football and see their kids play and then still be able to come here so now you've seen this team now in person you saw them last night in person up in Westville the second game seeing them in action live after they were in Danbury last weekend but uh, for you and for this uh, franchise where do you see this uh, this core and this group uh, really going this year I nothing short of what we did last year except one difference we win that last game <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm liking you know Harry's pulling uh, pulling guys that in the past we were not able to get um, we're working hard to make it where these guys do want to come here the fan base is a big deal it, all, it, all these guys love playing in this this building you know you play in front of a crowd like this Guys love it. Guys do love it, and it's been a fun first 20 minutes as we're at the first intermission. 
Thunderbirds trailing one to nothing, but Carey, thank you so much for coming up here and uh, taking some time to chat with us. I know it's a busy night for you, so I still really appreciate you coming up here. Thank you, anytime, appreciate it. Keep that, up the great job. That's Carey Ross, and more to come here on Thunderbirds intermission. One to nothing, Blue Ridge in front. We'll be take a look at the first period stats after this on Thunderbirds TV. Thank you. You want me to tell Barry to come up? Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Everybody. My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds and we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day. Go birds. My name is Melissa Pilsen and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool in Cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Welcome back to Winston-Salem as we're at the first intermission here on the home opener for the 2023-24 season. Halfway through the intermission, it's a 1-0 lead for the Blue Ridge Bobcats over the Carolina Thunderbirds after the first 20 minutes of action. And in that first period, it was Hunter Hall coming away with a goal that was able to beat Mario, Ca Mario Cavalieri from a short angle and, and just snuck through him as that gave... Blue Ridge, the early, the only goal that first period made it one to nothing. The total shots right now in favor of the Thunderbirds, 14-11 over the Blue Ridge Bobcats. A couple of penalties over that first period as well as a cross-checking minor uh, for Colton McGuire at the 442 mark, John Batita, and then jo and then John Batita, Josh Newberg, and Jan Salak all called for roughing minors. Two of them offset, and they put Salak in the penalty box as he served the two minutes. But the Thunderbirds so far to start off this season. They are 9 for 9 on the penalty kill. Uh, that's good for 100%. Uh, so the Thunderbirds right now, they've had the better chances over those first 20 minutes. Christian Pavlos has just done a great job in net so far, but the Thunderbirds now, and the period of the long change, will have the chance to try to be able to, to tie this one up and then hopefully eventually take the lead. Still more to come here on uh, Thunderbirds intermission report. Right now one to nothing in favor of Withville or the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Uh, the Thunderbirds now trying to in that locker room right now come away to trying to find a way to get past Christian Pavla. Still more to come here on Thunderbirds intermission. We'll be back after this on Thunderbirds TV. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors and motor and more for over 43 years. We stopped.
stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns, right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Get Welcome back to the annex of the Winston-Salem Fa Fairgrounds. At the first intermission, and it's a one to nothing lead for the Blue Ridge Bobcats after Hunter Hall's goal at the 8.55 mark of the first period. It's time to take a look around the rest of the FPHL here on a Saturday night. Only two other games this evening, and we will start with one that Thunderbirds fans should be looking at because next weekend the Thunderbirds go out to play the Binghamton Black Bears for two. Binghamton right now the points leader in the FPHL and in the first period there against Danbury in Danbury no score between Binghamton and the Hat Tricks. Looking elsewhere around the rest of the FPHL Motor City and Elmira from the first arena in Elmira New York. They're nearing the midway point of the second period it's the visitors the Motor City Rockers with a 2-0 lead thanks to two first period goals. One for Rocco Di Costanzo and Mike Wynn. That first one coming just a minute 15 into the game. Second one coming at the 1441 mark of that first period. So 2 0 Motor City over Elmira right now, and then scoreless between Binghamton and Danbury. So the Thunderbirds right now trailing 1 0 here at the first intermission, trying to play from behind once again here this season. Last Friday in the season opener in Danbury, the Thunderbirds trailed 2 1 heading to the third period before a Jan Salat goal tied it up at 2 and then a pair of goals from Gus Ford made it a 4-2 victory in opening night. Thunderbirds lost game 2-2-1 two, two to one. and then last night really were in control from start to finish with the 4-1 victory in which the first goal came a minute 16 into the game off the stick of Roman Kramer. So the Thunderbirds trying to come away with the sweep here in this home and home set in front of a sold out crowd here in Winston-Salem. We'll take a break and come back with the second period. We'll be joined by a special guest I'll tell you who that is coming up after the break here on Thunderbirds TV. Ready, Winston Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782. 3148 or visit her at com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. 
I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day, and go birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Welcome back to the Annex in Winston-Salem, North Carolina as Blue Ridge makes their way back out to the bench. The Thunderbirds getting set to come out of their dressing room out on the far corner as we're getting set to drop the puck here on the second period. Before we went uh, at the end of the first period, it looks like a man was called for two minutes against Blue Ridge and it looks like so it looks like the Thunderbirds are going to start the penalty or the period on the power play here to start things off. And to join me here for the second period here in the booth, former Thunderbird forward, Josh <laughs> Keplinger. He's, he's, yeah. he's taking uh, the middle 20 with us up here in the booth. going to provide a little color. But uh, Josh, thanks so much for coming up here tonight and uh, the home opener and, and first time that you're not you're not on the ice here uh, in quite a little bit for the Thunderbirds. But, uh, but glad to have you in the building this evening. What have you thought over the first 20 minutes? Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's first of all, I just want to touch on the atmosphere. It's buzzing in here. It is awesome, man. As the uh, as the boys make their way back onto the ice, um, it's it's awesome, man. Uh, the the boys played all right in the first. I think um, I think they could be a little bit smarter with the puck in the offensive zone. Uh, just kind of too many hope plays and throwing the puck into space where we don't have pressure attacking. Um, but the D zone looks good. Cabby's playing well in there. Um, boys look like they're they're a lot more structured on the back end. Um, we just got to find a way to put the puck in the net, and once you get one, you get a few. <laughs> saw that happen last night. Also saw that last weekend in the third period of that uh, opening night game. So the second period just about set to get started, and what it's showing on the scoreboard here at the Annex, it looks like the Thunderbirds are going to be on the power play. Uh, but still no announcement from anyone as now the officials come over to talk. As now it looks like they're trying to figure something out on the on the scoreboard. Now a man makes his way over to the sin bin on the near side. And it looks like it is gonna be Saba Smirnoff, the one who has a two minute minor in the box. He's still yet to be told what the infraction was. But so the Thunderbirds will start this second period five on four. 
it's a big power play too to get to get some momentum back on your side uh, win the face off for starters and then go to work it's Gus Ford in against Josh Newberg and Newberg ties him up on the face off we'll play it back all the way the defenseman Delcart who plays it back out to center ice and it goes all the way back down to Tucker Firth who will play it behind him Is actually a penalty on Pavlos, actually. It's a Smirnoff settling. Kramer dances in all the way behind the net, plays it on the back end. They'll bring it back out to the point. Dawson Baker going to his Tucker Firth, a shot, and that one's blocked at the top of the dot. First man to it, though, in the corner is Kramer. He brings it out to the top of the dot and out of the high slot and leaves it for Gus Ford. Ford walks in, a shot, and a save by Pavlos, and he'll cover. I like number 10 shooting the puck for <laughs> Saw Gus with two goals last weekend, had an assist last night after he went almost all the way through. Uh, and he was able to leave one for Dawson Baker. Uh, that made it 2 0 at the time. And now Ford will be into the faceoff to the left of Pavlos going up against Granquist. The tie up. Ford's able to win it back to Firth and will back in all the way back around the net. And there to pick it up is Ivanov will play it off the boards and rattle it all the way back down the length of the ice for Mario Cavalieri to leave it for Tucker Firth. 109 left to go in the two minute minor against the net minder Christian Pavlos up the far side. Baker's on side. He'll wrap this one around the boards. Takes a hop. And Gus Ford's the first one there. And he'll play it back right over towards Baker, who gets tied up on the far half boards. Puck bounces around into the corner. Coming away with it is Kramer. Kramer behind the net. All the way out on the near side to the near dot. Cycling back out to the flow logo. And he'll shuffle it over to Baker. Baker steps through him. Back to the top of the dot. Sizing up, he leaves it for Firth. Firth walks in, gets to Kramer in the slot. Shot save, puck still loose, and it comes out to the corner. Kramer a shot, and that one goes high off the glass and back out to the point. Baker keeps it in with 30 to go on the man advantage. Gus Ford spins away from the defender in the corner, brings it to the near half boards, and gets it back out to Baker. Goes cross ice, walking in, Firth a shot, and that one's deflected to the glass. Puck still battling around. There's Kessler Sky. Still not cleared. Firth walks in. Gets it to Kramer. Kramer now on the far half boards with 10 to go on the two minute advantage. Throws one in front. Puck still is. Gus Ford scores! <laughs> Gus Ford right on the doorstep after Pavlos couldn't hang on to it. Deflects it in and we're tied up at one. Smart play, man. You know the power play time's running down. Uh, Cavi did a good job of letting the guys know. Uh, and you need to attack, right? And cross crease pass in the back of the net. Good play by Gus. Way to finish. That's his third goal on the season. Now with four points for the reigning FPHL MVP. You said it at the beginning of that power play. You like number 10 shooting the puck, and now he's pulling in the back of the net. We're tied at one here, two minutes into the second period. A big hit there by Schnapp after he took a stick high from Pavlos. It comes back out as Newberg will hold it behind his own net. Buck bounces back out to neutral ice. Keeley a little indifferent as now it's poked away by Batonic all the way to the far side and played in by Tristan Wells where Cavalieri will hold it behind his own net and Joe Kennedy will come away with it. That goal, as always, brought to you by Riddle Tractor after the Thunderbirds went on the Little Italy power play. Blake Keeley sends this one down, and this one will go for icing. So a pretty good start to this second period. Yeah, yeah, Kramer made a good play there, getting the puck across the net. Um, it's what you want to see, especially a guy who's you know new to the new to the team. Um, get him on the board and go from here. Get some momentum now. Well, so now a defensive zone face off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. Nate Keeley will win it. Back to his twin brother Clay Keeley before it comes out to the near side. Danny Martin runs into a man, and now Joe Kennedy in a tie up in the corner. Kennedy will throw a hit on Keeley as now they're still tangled up in the corner. Puck comes out on the half boards before Keeley throws him down. Comes back out to the point. Shot goes high and wide. Cavalieri never saw it. Puck comes back. Out loose in front and Cavalieri makes a save. McGuire whiffs and now here comes Mussina. Mussina all alone on a breakaway. Walks and he scores! The 
captain on opening night puts the Thunderbirds back in front. It's two to one here in the second. There's not a guy you'd like to see score a goal more than that guy right there, number 14. Smart veteran play. Get Pavlis to bite, roof it high glove like he normally does. Good start to the second here. The goal for Butina comes at 3.08 of the second period and what a response after the first 20 by the Thunderbirds. They now lead two to one and now have a chance to try to be able to keep the pressure going as this one will go all the way down for icing. We'll bring up an offensive zone face off for the Thunderbirds. So now another chance as the second line is out for the Thunderbirds. Kessler Sky in for the draw, facing off against Eric Fabian Gronquist. It's a tie up, Salak trying to come away with it. It's still loose in between a bunch of skates and now it comes in on Pavlos and he'll cover. So an entertaining first three plus minutes of this second period. The goal from Gus Ford at the 153 mark on the power play. The second power play goal for the Thunderbirds here in 2023 with assists from Tucker Firth and Roman Kramer. And then John Petita just a few seconds ago. Tie up on the face off again. Puck bounces free to the half boards but only for a second as it comes back out to the point. Popoff isn't able to keep it in and going back down is Hagee. He gets pressure by Matonic before it's played up on the far side. Popoff. The righty walks it up across the red line and now walk it into the attacking zone as he plays it off the half boards and wraps it around. Back to play it is a Nesson. Only so far as he gets it right back in the near corner. Dumas supplying pressure before it's played out to Hall, trying to get a stretch pass out to Matonic, but Popoff was there as Matonic was just a little out in front of it and it's played back to Curtis Hagee. Hagee in his near corner will go to his defense pairing. And Popoff, Popoff will make a man miss as Blue Ridge goes off for a change. Now here's Dominic Dumas on a stretch pass into the attacking zone. Dumas dances through a defender as after taking a hip power check. Play. And that will bring up another power play for the Thunderbirds. Official's arm went up. That Butita goal starts in the D zone with number 70, should be 72, making a big <laughs> save, right? Uh, and then obviously, you got your captain on a breakaway at home in this atmosphere, it's going in the net. Good start to the period for the boys. And now they have a chance to go on the power play once again. Penalty is against Eric Agnesov as he makes his way into the penalty box. Another power play brought to you by Little Italy. Tucker for the shot from the point. Puck still loose to the left of the net. Kramer couldn't get his stick there as there was bodies flying in front. A huge hit there by Schnapp on the near half boards. Kramer walks in. Backhand pass and it's taken away and cleared back out to center ice. Tucker Firth now being pressured by Granquist as Firth, he goes down to the ice and Gus Ford pokes it away. But Eric Fabian Granquist still applying pressure as Ford pirouettes his way out of him and now starts back up. He finds Roman Kramer across center ice and into the zone. Kramer walks in to the near dot, goes cross ice, a one-timer. That one's blocked in the slot. Dawson Baker was there. But it's cleared all the way back down to Mario Cavalieri. He looks for that stretch pass. He loves to try to get those out, especially when the opposing team's going off for a change. It's a smart play by Bakes there, trying to get into the middle of the ice, trying to get into a shooting area on the power play. Uh, reading the play well there for him. Kramer walks in, leaves it for Schnapp. Far dot, tries to get it back to Baker, but instead it's a turnover as the puck gets poked all the way back down on a attempt by Hall. And so now the Thunderbirds will have to reset with 56 seconds left to go here in the power play. Under 15 to go in the second period. Ford walks in and his pass gets deflected. Schnapp gloves it, brings it down, and gets it back out to the point. Clay Keeley to Baker. Baker from the top of the dot. Thought about the shot. Thinks better though as now he whacks it over to the near half boards and Kramer will try to cycle it in before it gets closed off and this one will be cleared out all the way back down towards the Blue Ridge bench and Cavalier. He comes from his crease and goes with the long stretch pass. Schnapp's still out there. He's been out there this whole power play. Leaves it for Salak. Salak walks in near side. Throws one in front. Oh! The deflection goes wide. Dominic Dumas was there and he just sent it wide on the near side. Battle for it in the corner with Clay Keeley going up against Colton McGuire. Dumas good, comes away with it. Good stick by the Whitfield defender there. Kennedy, already a power play goal this week, and Lisa for Keeley in a shot. Sails high and wide, high off the corner glass. 
Salak will cycle this back down as Dumas on the far half boards. Waits, gets it back out to the point to Keely. Arister, that one's blocked by Sielek. And now the penalty is over. And coming out of the box is Agnezov. As now this will go all the way down. Agnezov coming out of the box. He had a chance at potentially a breakaway, but he ran into the official. So the power play is over with 13.30 left to go here in the second period. Two goals, one from Gus Ford, the second from John Butita. Have the Thunderbirds in front. A long stretch pass deflected by Salak. No icing as Pavlos back behind his net to play it. And it's played up the near side. And here comes Smirnov. Smirnov backhands one in. Sian Kennedy will play this with a hand pass as it went straight to Jan Salak. And that will bring us to our first media timeout of this second period. The Thunderbirds, a pair of quick goals from Gus Ford and John Petita. Have them on front here on the home opener. We're back after this on Thunderbirds TV. Here at Compton. We think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell like all. Like Ava's Cupcakes is there, the so sweetest, like, the bakery to call. Come in and relieve you a bit. <laughs> Back here in Winston-Salem, it's a defensive zone face-off for the Thunderbirds to the right of Mario Cavalieri, but a 2-1 advantage thanks to a goal from Gus Ford at the 153 mark, and then John Petita about a minute and 20 seconds later on a breakaway makes it 2-1, and now in for the face-off will be Nate Keeley against Eric Fabian Grant. Course, it's one back to Nicoletti before it gets poked back out to Jacob Schnapp. Third line out for the Thunderbirds as Puck takes a deflection off of the stick of Schnapp and is played off the boards before Nate Keeley comes away with it at the blue line. He has to wait for Schnapp to get back on side, and they didn't, so it'll be an offside call against the Thunderbirds. But Josh, those first 20 minutes we were talking about during the during the inter, during the break, that you know it's almost kind of a wash, but now the second period that looks like they got their legs back under. Yeah, the the first period at home, obviously an electric building like it is. Uh, the first period, you know, you want to get the jitters out, get the excitement going, and then uh, the second period is where you can kind of turn it on, settle in a little bit into the game, and, and get going from there. So the, the boys have done that. Thankful to be joined by Josh Keplinger here in this second period. Morning us here in the broadcast booth, and now the Thunderbirds bring it into the attacking zone. Keeley tries to get it back out, but it skips over the stick of Gregory Felder and comes all the way back down. Now Grandquist up into the far corner. He turns back, trying to get past Firth, who just stiff arms him into the boards before it, poked, it pokes back out. And now it's lost at the dot, and coming away with it is John Petita. He just scored a few minutes ago as we're under 12 and a half to go here in the second period, and Nate Keeley brings it into the attacking zone. At the far half boards, trying to angle off Nicoletti. He does, he gets it back out to the point where Hagee will send it all the way back down. It takes a bounce off of Petita's stick, and Tristan Wells plays on the backhand, but only right to Jacob Schnapp. Schnapp now trying to throw it into the slot, where it's taken away by Granquist and dumped back out to center ice. Yeah, it took a weird bounce off of the, the back Zamboni door there or else uh, Boots would have been able to keep, keep that one in. Schnapp shot, took a deflection and goes into the protective netting. That should bring up a, an offensive zone faceoff for the Thunderbirts. It looks like it'll come to the left of Pavlos. Just under 12 to go here in the second. So the first line out for Carolina. Ford in for the draw against Newbert. Ford gets tied up. And it looks like someone was a little early. So they're back in to do it again to the left of Pavlos. Ford tried to step through the face up, but it comes all the way back out. But you, you have to be happy with these first eight minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, you're you're happy, but you're not satisfied, right? Um, you always want to keep going. Uh, odd man rushes are nice. 
but just get the puck in and, and go to work and establish your forecheck and good things will happen. We well, gotta see how Blue Ridge responds after giving up two early goals. Holding it behind his own net is Andre Ivanov. He plays it up on the near side to Agneza before it's poked all the way back up. Puck bounces around once again and takes it all the way back and a pass goes wanting. This one will go all the way down and it'll be icing against the Thunderbirds. Yeah, Dash, the mascot here, just to the right of us in the broadcast booth. He's got the drum going. <laughs> So two to one, the Thunderbirds in front here at 11.16 to go in this second period. The period of the long shift, the tie up on the face off to the left of Cavalieri as now there's a tie up in the corner. Puck comes back out to center ice. Baker throws a man down to the ground as Ford tries to come away with it, but it's played by Colton McGuire back out to center ice before Baker and he takes a hit and applies a hit as well on Selec before it's dumped all the way back in. Delcart with a little bit of a free shot there on Gus Ford on the near side as Ford now gives chase and gives a little nudge in the back of the head to Colton McGuire. McGuire has been one of the instigators here so far tonight. He's been involved in every skirmish so far. As another hit's applied at center ice, that time by Curtis Haig. Yeah, uh, the intensity's definitely picked up here, hasn't it, B? It, it's, uh, it's ramping up here, some free-flowing uh, odd man rush style hockey. Sky tried to get one in front. McGuire, nice shot blocking it off as Salak takes a tumble. Looks like he got a skate in his stick. No call from the official in the far corner. So now another tie up. Sky battling, trying to get it back out, but Danny Martin intercepts and plays it off the glass all the way back down. It'll be a race down for icing with Kennedy as well as a Bobcat as that one gets tied up in the corner. Kennedy is able to win the battle as Popoff lays it off for Jan Salak. Here comes Salak, the lonely man from the check line playing here tonight as Salak gets it back down low, a throw in front, puck bouncing around in the slot and coming away with it is McGuire and he'll play it back down to center ice. Will this have enough? And it will. It's pretty tough to take the puck away from a guy like Jan Salak. <laughs> Just his frame, the size, how strong he is on his skates. When he gets around the net, I uh, I like 16's chances around the net. <laughs> well, we've reached the other 10 media timeout. Two to one advantage for the Thunderbirds as we've reached the back half of this one. We'll be back after this on Thunderbirds TV. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Get ready when Back here on Thunderbirds TV, a two to one advantage for Carolina here on their home opener for 2023-2024. Brendan Riley being joined by Josh Ketlinger who has taken the time to come join us here in the booth. And it's been a good first 10 minutes or so for you up here. Might yeah, be up here for a little I, bit longer. I, I might have to stay up here for a little bit, I guess, which is fine. First four minutes he's up here. Thunderbirds scored two goals. Chance at another one as Joe Kennedy throws one in. And a glove saved by Pavlos as that one somehow got through traffic. Jacob Schnapp. Who's in front of the net? <laughs> and no, but that, that's an aspect of it that gets unnoticed, I feel. Or underappreciated is, is a guy like Jacob going to the dirty areas. That's where a lot of goals are scored, especially come playoff time and crunch time. Uh, and he's good at that. So it looks like... Face off to the left, Schnapp and McGuire exchange a couple of stick taps as now Nate Keeley's thrown out of the face off dot. John Batita comes in. 
Goal at the 308 mark of this second period to give the Thunderbirds the lead on a breakaway as he loses the face off on the near side. And out comes Jakob Volf, who will play it past Kennedy into the corner. There, Clay Keeley will chase after it. And Kennedy comes away with it in the near half boards before it's pucked up. It's poked out and Butita goes cross ice to Schnapp. Thunderbirds are on side as Schnapp plays it off the boards and rattles it behind the net to Nate Keeley. Got both Keeley twins out on the ice right now. As Batita comes away with it in the corner, just pokes it along, goes off the skate of Schnapp before coming back down to Batita. Batita out into the center of the ice. Schnapp, his shot gets deflected, and Nate Keeley is the first one there as Kennedy has it. Kennedy will just cycle this one back behind the net for Schnapp. Schnapp has it on the forehand, goes cross ice, high slot now to Kennedy at the point. A shot that was deflected wide as Batita a takes a high here. stick. The arm is up for a penalty, and that will be called. Right in the mustache. <laughs> We'll have to see who this is against. I'm not sure if it's the defenseman or even maybe Pablas got the stick up there. It looks like it's going to be a minor here, B. I don't think he's cut or anything, no blood. So it looks like it's going to be a two. So the Thunderbirds, for the third time this period, will be heading to the power play. Yeah, Gus's goal earlier in the period, like fresh ice. It's a little bit more, ice is a little bit more chewed up now, so got to be really crisp with how you move the puck and be sharp. And so the man heading to the box will be the captain for Blue Ridge. It's going to be Kyle Stevens. So he wanted an extra... Trying to plead his case, yeah. isn't it? So it's not the worst idea to try to do that a time or two. Well, the number is actually the netminder again, Christian Pavlos, who just gets called for his second penalty of the night. The offensive zone faceoff is one, but only for a quick second as Hall clears it all the way down and Baker back. It looked like a high stick from the defenseman there as John was trying to get to the net. Well, they call it on the goalie, so don't see that very often. Two penalties called on a goalie in the span of about 12 minutes of action. Well, He's just trying to get the, the penalty numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Christian's a good goalie. Um, really big, solid, solid net minder, moves well. In the far corner, and now we have a stoppage, as that one might have taken a deflection into the netting. But so minute 24 remains on the high-sticking penalty against the goalie, Christian Pavlos. Here with 8.23 left to go in the second period. Thunderbirds one for three on the power play tonight. As Gus Ford wins the neutral zone faceoff, it comes near side to Tucker Firth. Firth will wrap this one around the boards and it comes out into the far side as Roman Kramer goes after it with Colton McGuire. Comes away with it, gets it back to Baker. Baker walks in, into the high slot, shot save. Puck still loose in the slot, rebound attempt by Sky. His shot goes wide as he goes tumbling to the ground. On the far side now, Kramer looking cross ice. Firth leaves it for Baker at the far point. He'll now bring it out into the middle of the zone. He goes to Gus Ford as the Thunderbirds set up the power play. Firth, top of the slot, a shot. Say, puck's still loose. Pablo still passing around four. He comes away with it, and he scores! A scramble in front of the net, and it falls onto the stick of Gus Ford, who gets his second power play goal of the evening, and the Thunderbirds have a 3-1 lead here in the second. Getting pucks to the net, attacking the net, bodies, traffic. You get rewarded. Really good movement, good execution out of the power play there. And that's the most important thing though, getting shots, getting traffic. A lot of bodies in front. Pavla let up a rebound. And so now both penalties he's been called for. The Thunderbirds have scored on, on those ensuing power plays. Back underway, three to one, the Thunderbirds in front over the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Jacob Schnapp, the on Salak, who spins his way into the zone, walks in, into the slot, slot, puck, bouncing around, still loose in it's front, loose. it's in the crease. Oh, ref lost sight of it. And so a stoppage after the puck was just loose. It was loose here on the near side. Pavlos, he had his pad there.
Yeah, I think the ref just was caught on the in the opposite corner and couldn't quite see. Trusted that that Pavlis had it under his gear, but uh, it was loose sitting there. It brings up an offensive zone faceoff. 7.30 to go here in the second period. A 3-1 advantage. Three unanswered goals for the Thunderbirds for the second time this season. Jacob Schnapp goes in and gets the faceoff. Gets it back out to the point. Clay Keeley will throw one intentionally wide as it bounces off of the boards and over to the near half board. Smirnov gets thrown to the ice by Clay's twin brother Nate before it's poked along to Tristan Wells. Wells will loft this one back out to center ice and he takes a late hit there from Jacob Schnapp as now the puck's still bouncing around. Here's Danny Morin into the near board, into the near dot. A shot from Smirnov sails high and comes out to the far side. John Batita going up against the number 14, Newbert. A shot, it's deflected. Cavalieri gets a save. Puck's still loose though as now Joe Kennedy, his defenseman, comes away with it. Now here come the Thunderbirds. Like Joe Kennedy with some steam. Kennedy walks in, leaves it for Keely. A shot it ends up trickling wide after he didn't get all, all of it on it as Sir Smirnov came in and was able to lift his stick. It's pretty easy to play forward when you have Joe Kennedy back there as a one-man breakout. You can just get, get up the ice. Saw him do it last night as he came away with a power play goal. Three points on the season, two goals and assists for the Seattle Washington native. Jacob Schnapp goes after Tristan Wells but ends up to Hunter Hall and has both the goals for Blue Ridge this weekend. He dumps it in just to the right of Cavalieri. Back to play on the backhand is Hagee before it comes to Jordan Popoff who spins his way out of a hit. And now here comes Jan Salak. Salak dances through center ice over the blue line, holding a man on him. Leaves it for Sky, goes cross ice. Hagee a shot! And now it goes just side. Rebound attempt! That Sky throws it on and the net comes off its moorings and that will bring up a stoppage. So another time here we've seen this net down on the right side come off. It's more having to Mario Cavalieri a couple times in that first period, but they'll bring out the ice maintenance once again. Yeah, every rink is a little different. Uh, the surface, like no, but the the surface and and how rough or smooth or hard, uh, you know, every rink is different. Um, and for some reason here. You know, the, the net seems to come off a little bit more than it usually does <laughs> at other places, but it's okay. Regroup here and look to get a chance. Still waiting for one of those patented annex bounces coming off of the boards or coming off of the stanchions. Of yeah, the, the, the longer you play here, the more you, you understand where the weird bounces are. And <laughs> Heading to the rink last week, talking to uh, talking with Jan Salak. Asked him, what do you think of the ice in Danbury? And he was like, it's good, but I like our home bounces here in Winston-Salem a lot That's better. Right. That's right. So back underway under six minutes to go. Jordan Popoff keeps it in as he backhands this one. It goes There's just the off the right high there. glass. And now a tie up for it in the corner. Kessler Sky gets thrown to the ground. Well, the puck's still loose behind the net, and Hall comes away with it. So he leaves it now for Newberger. He goes cross ice over towards the benches. Matonic tries to play it, and he runs into Curtis Hagee, who just stands him up at the blue line. And they're going to call a penalty for interference. Oh. It's one of those it's one of those kind of in-between calls. He, he does obstruct him. He gets in his way, but... He doesn't knock him over or push him or anything. He's just kind of skating in, into the same ice, and uh, the ref obviously didn't see it that way, but that's okay. The kill's been, been pretty good this year, so I trust the, the penalty kill and, and the goaltender. The Thunderbirds penalty kill, talking about it, nine for nine this season. So the that's pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Face-off is won by back to McGuire's Danny Martin walks into the dot, drops it back to McGuire at the blue line, goes cross ice, far side, a shot from the dot, save, puck still loose, Cavalier though is able to save it down to the butterfly, still comes loose, back out to Martin on the near half boards. Gets it back out to the point, McGuire skates over, gliding back to Martin, he walks in, a shot, that one didn't get all the way through, hit a leg in front and comes out to the near corner. Puck still, battle four in the corner. Grandquist loses it, and Nate Keeley's able to clear all the way down. But just over 30 seconds off of this penalty kill. We're under five to go. Oh, no, and a huge hit by Jacob Schnapp. Behind the net, he just absolutely threw Smirnov up into the boards. Hard plays win hockey games. You got Tucker Firth going down on a knee, getting in front of a, getting in front of a, a slap shot like that, making a block. Sacrificing the body. Jacob Schnapp, obviously, a physical presence. 
Cena clears this one all the way down. 56 seconds to go here on the penalty kill for the Thunderbirds. Nine for nine this year on the penalty kill is Carolina as McGuire will just dump this one in before it's cleared all the way back down by Clay Keeley. Thunderbirds go off for a change. Pavlos will play it up the far side and now out to the blue line. Working quickly, Newberg gets it across the blue line into the attacking zone, working against Joe Kennedy. He spins back on him, gets it back out to the point. Stevens throws one in front, looking for a deflection. It goes wide on the near side. Now it's back out to the point. Agnezov fires it back over. Matonic gets it right back to Agnezov, who plays it on the near half boards. He walks into the dot, just throws one in front. Shot and a save by Cavalieri as he covers with a man tumbling down to the ice and Joe Kennedy. You're going to give up shots on the power play. That's where you want to give them up from. Outside the dots, on a tough angle, you trust your goalie there. Uh, it's, uh, it's what you want. That's ideal. So 16 seconds remaining on the penalty kill. We've hit our under five media timeout. It's 3-1 to one Thunderbirds here in the second. Be right back on Thunderbirds TV. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor. And she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. What's up everybody? My name is Back here in Winston-Salem, three to one, the Thunderbirds in front. 16 seconds left to go on this penalty kill for Carolina. And their netminder, Mario Cavalieri, who's sporting the Super Mario mask. I think that's Princess Peach on the back plate, too, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Face off is one. Ognezov on the near side at the blue line. Goes cross ice to Ivanov. Gets down to the dot shot, and that one is saved by Cavalieri. Hall is in front. Cycling it back out to the point. It's like Nessa on the near half boards. He'll throw one in. Blocker saved by Cavalieri. And the penalty kills over as Hagee makes his way out of the box. Hall spins around, throws one in front, in the crease. Puck still loose, and Cavalieri is able to cover. Cavalieri staying strong, and then the best thing, you got three red sweaters just absolutely suffocating there. That's that's just it, right? You, you see three red sweaters before you see a white one. So you obviously have a lot of buy-in on the defensive side of the puck here, which has been awesome to see. That has been one of the things that Steve Harrison has harped about throughout the first four weeks that he's been with this team and this roster and has shown so far. Defensive zone face-off. Ford wins it on a tie-up, and Joe Kennedy comes away with it. 3.23 left to go here in the second period, and a 3-1 advantage for the Thunderbirds. Gus Ford walks it, trying to get it over to Baker, but one off a skate of a Blue Ridge defenseman. And Stevens will now back in this one in, cross cornered, going after it is Volf. He's able to win the battle, but only for a second before Clay Keeley steps into him, and now a big tie-up over there. Puck loose along the boards before it comes back out to Gus Ford. Ford trying to get a hat trick here tonight. He's already got two, he had two back on opening night as now he walks in. Ford behind the net, has Stevens on him. He'll spin his way out and now shovel it along the boards to Kramer. Kramer brings it back out in the near dot. Cross eye shot, oh and a save by Pavlos on Dawson Baker. Ford still has it though, Puck still bouncing around. It's loose and now it comes back out and Granquist walks it out of the zone before he gets poke checked away and the Thunderbirds try to recover and Dawson Baker will finally fight one back to Jordan Popoff. Yeah, you saw Ford defer there to, to, to Baker Trying to trying to set him up. Um, it's it's the right play if it gets there. It's an unselfish play. Uh, good skilled play by Goss. Just hit a skate. Unlucky. Del Cart goes to his defensive Perry McGuire and throws one out to center ice. Where Popoff plays it off the boards before it gets poked away and Danny Martin comes away with it once again. He runs into Jan Salak and Salak disposes of him. As now on the far side, Hagee will play it back to Popoff. 
From his near corner, a stretch pass out to center ice, and Kessler Sky gets ran into by Selec. Delcourt tries to step up, but coming away with it is Dominic Dumas. Dumas will play this one in and get it in deep before it's shoveled back around. Kessler Sky behind the net. Sky dancing around a defender before Selec steps into him. As now a more tie up behind the net, and now the two throw a few punches. Good keep at the blue line here. Keeping it in was pop off with a shot from the point. Then get all the way through as it was Delcart getting in front of it. As now Blue Ridge will reset back at center ice. Is running there 90 seconds to go here in the second period. A three to one lead for the Thunderbirds. All three goals coming in this second period. Carolina's and really carried the play so far in this second period. Let's see if they can get another here. Dumas walks in a shot and he scores. Dominic Dumas somehow sneaks one past Christian Pavlis as he picks up his first professional goal here in his third game. And he makes it 4-1 to one here with 1-12 to go in the second. If you would have blinked, you would have missed it. He threw the monkey off the back too. I love it. I uh, had a chance to skate with him this morning and, and he looked sharp. He can shoot the puck clearly as you saw there. Uh, smart heads up play to get a puck on that here late in the period. The Boise, Idaho native gets his first professional goal. It was a healthy scratch last night and now back in the lineup here tonight after Peter Panacek and then Yuri Pashtuka both out this evening. So we approach a minute to go here in the second period. It has been all Thunderbirds over this middle 20. Newbert chases it down in the attacking zone, throws one in front and a save by Cavalieri. It took just a slight deflection, oh, and now here we go! And a man goes down in front of the net! Officials try to get in to break it up. As now this just looks like frustration from Blue Ridge. And it was Nate Keeley, one of the Keeley twins, throwing a man down. He throws down Jakob Volt, who now takes a curtain call around the rink after he just got disposed of by Nate Keeley. He's bleeding bad, too. He's bleeding bad. And now he gets a few comments from Tucker first, and he makes his way to the dressing room. I just don't understand it. You're, you're losing 4-1. to one. It, I mean, I don't think he's trying to show up the crowd, but, I mean, just an emotional, you know, series of events there, I just, I don't really understand. So Keeley makes his way to the box. But before that, a, a great save by Mario Cavalier. Great save. He, he's been dialed in this period. Um, the first, ever since, ever since he let in the, the first goal, Blue Ridge's first goal, he's been, he's been lights out. It'll be interesting to see what what we get here, what the calls, what the calls are going to be. And so Keeley, it looks like this will probably be a five minute as he makes his way to the dressing room. I think this might just be a couple of five minute majors for fighting. I I don't see why it wouldn't be. Yeah, I I, I don't see how it could be anything more, if that even. It looks like Gus Ford just flashed over to the bench five. Gus doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He knows I'm kidding. What did I say? If you score one, you score a few? Yeah, you said, you said that at the uh, top of the period. Score one, you get a few, and it has been exactly the case here in this second period. Gus Ford, a pair of goals. John Batita, a goal. And Dominic Dumas, a goal as well. The faceoff is one back to Firth. He rouses it around the boards to Batita on the half board. Says the second period is under a minute. Second periods this season, always presented by our good partners at Flow Automotive. Tucker Firth will hold this one behind his own net with Matonic there waiting right in front of Cavalieri's crease. So we approach 30 seconds to go here in the second period. Firth dancing around, he brings it back to the Budweiser logo. Now he 
Gets a pass up on the near side to Gus Ford with 23 seconds to go. Ford cross ice, gets it over to Batita. You got a piece of it as this one goes down. Nicoletti gets ran right into the boards before it gets poked all the way up to Jacob Schnapp. Schnapp will just cycle this one down. Batita trying to reach out to get it with 10 seconds to go. Puck squirts free just to the left of the net before it gets ricocheted in the corner. Seven seconds and six. Batita now tied up with Tristan Wells. Those two dropped the gloves last night. Two seconds and one. And that will be the end of the second period. Well, what a period for the Carolina Thunderbirds. Four unanswered fun, huh? goals. Yeah. And a big part of that is the fact we had you here in the booth tonight, Josh <laughs> Kaplinger. Uh, you, you want to stick around for the third, or you want to go enjoy the rest uh, of this one? We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it during the break, yeah. and uh, we'll find out. Well, Josh, thank you for joining me here in the thank second you. period. And uh, that's Josh Kaplinger. Four to one, the Thunderbirds lead after 40 minutes here in Winston Salem. Come on back, we'll have a conversation with the owner, Barry Soskin, after this on Thunderbirds TV. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day. And go birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. Back here in Winston-Salem as we've reached the second intermission this evening of the home opener of the 2023-24 season. And it's a 4-1 lead for the Carolina Thunderbirds over the Blue Ridge Bobcats. And we, uh, we are joined by uh, one of the owners, Kerry Ross, during the first intermission. Now we're uh, pleased to be joined by Barry Soskin joining us here in the broadcast booth for a few minutes here on opening night for the Thunderbirds. Barry, first off, uh, uh, a big second period for the Thunderbirds coming away for four goals. I mean, what have you seen out there on the ice so far? <laughs> everything that I've seen on the ice has been great. Uh, I love it. The crowd, everything's been going strong. But first, I'd like to say welcome aboard. Thanks Thank you. for jumping on board. Yeah. Uh, uh, people from the area uh, certainly will remember you with uh, your time with the Dash, and we welcome you aboard and uh, hope you have some fun here. No, it's been fun so far. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, last weekend in Danbury was great. Last night was fun as well, and now tonight. Even though you had some issues, yeah, we'll, we'll work uh, through those we'll, issues. We'll, we're, we're, back, we're back there in a few weeks. <laughs> oh, but, um, Hopefully we'll get those issues done. <laughs> well, we got the chuck a puck going on here at uh, the second intermission, but uh, but a, a big night here. I mean, this team after going to the to five games in the Commissioner Cup final last year, uh, it's been a long time for these fans to get back here. Sold out crowd tonight, and, and, and as the owner here, that has to make you uh, make you pretty proud and, 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 and you have to feel pretty good about the uh, about the turnout here tonight. Absolutely, and I, I think that this is just uh, the fans remember where we were at. We, we were in that last game, uh, a goal short. Depending on the time clock, maybe we weren't even a goal short. But we'll, we'll get through that. And, and as we grow and we move on, uh, there's been a few changes. Uh, Garrett's moved on. And uh, my old friend and coach who, who brought, uh, brought me a championship in one of my other teams down in Danville, uh, Harry is now with us here. He'll do a great job, uh, as well as the new faces you see on the ice. And some of those faces are hard, uh, I don't want to say they're hard to take a look at, 
But <laughs> but you know, as a fan, you like the old guys. You mm. know, you want you want to see, you want to remember. And some of them have have moved on to a, a better place in hockey, and we wish them all the best. Uh, some of them have moved on to other teams, whether they be at our level or or thereabouts. And, and I'm happy for the turnaround. I love to see the new faces. And, and the fans are getting to know new players, and, and everything comes starts again. Now, you've known Steve Harrison for quite a long time. We talked about it in the coaches' show a few weeks back. You, you guys knew each other back from uh, Toledo, if, if my memory serves me correct. But he, he had been out of the FPHL for a couple of years. How would you get him here? How would you bring him back and get him behind the bench here for the Thunderbirds? Bribery. <laughs> Uh, a promise of alcohol. No, the um, the, the truth is he, you know, his wife was in. Uh, they were in Toledo, which is I had the, the Toledo Storm there in the in the East Coast Hockey League for a long time. So that's where I met him, and we had a, a, a lot of good conversations. Uh, when it, it came time for for me to hire a coach in in Danville, the timing seemed to be right, and and I hired him. He spent three great years there, brought the team a championship, and built the foundation that I was so happy about. And from there, we just grew, we grew as friendship, you know, grew our friendship more. When he wound up saying, hey, listen, my wife's gonna leave Toledo and we're gonna go down to where she's from, which is Fort Wayne, there were opportunities for him in the Dallas area, so I said, you should look at them. You know, we're, we're both the same age. Uh, which means we're both really old and we're just trying to help you help friends out and this was just the best way for him to go spend some time back home you go out on a winner my son was on that team and and you know he there's something about hanging him up when you got a championship you know there's nothing wrong with that that's the way he wanted to walk out and Harry worked there for whatever it was about five years and I think he had the itch uh, and you know timing seemed to be everything and I get a phone call, and I, I, I didn't even care. I said, you're hired. You know, I, it, I, I didn't even have, I, I had no idea where he was going to go, but I loved him so much. And then he goes, well, I think maybe I should tell my better half. So I said, yeah, <laughs> definitely tell her. And, you know, we talked a couple days later, and I said, you know, pack your bags and head to Winston. And it was just that simple. So it was great. Well, he has been he has been great to work with so far. He has he has really been helpful throughout uh, these first few weeks or so. And uh, I think he, with how the teams look so far, I think uh, I think the right right decision was made there, um, at least here early on. And hopefully, as this season starts to to get going. But uh, we we don't get you here too often. Do you have anything uh, any anything you want to say to the people watching on Thunderbirds TV, or even for the people that'll go back and watch this one here tonight? Well, I just want to say uh, first of all, thank you for watching on YouTube. We have a following not just here in the area, but as we continue to grow and have good teams and players from all around the world really have been paying attention and their friends. We, we've gotten a, a real cult following actually. My friends back in Chicago, the ones that, I, I'll bet you Harry Brand's listening now, uh, you know, I've got a bunch of guys that, that actually pay attention to what I'm doing here. Uh, I, I'm sure that Harry's probably got the Hawk game on as well, but <laughs> Harry, if you're listening, thanks. Well, Barry, thank you so much for you coming bet, up here. Uh, enjoy the rest of tonight and, and uh, enjoy this one, and thank you for coming up here. And we're at the first intermission right now. It's a 4-1 lead for the Thunderbirds. We'll come back and run through the second period. Stats coming up after this on Thunderbirds TV. My name is Melissa Pilson, and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com.
Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Back here in Winston-Salem as the second intermission continues to roll on here with the Thunderbirds, a 4-1 lead. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV. Big thank you to both the owners here tonight, our two-thirds of the owners here tonight, Kerry Ross and Barry Soskin joining us here during the first and second intermissions. A big thank you, Josh Keplinger as well, for joining me throughout the second period. We're going to have to bring him back up here as the season continues to roll along because in that second period, the Thunderbirds coming away with four unanswered goals. Two of them coming on the power play, and it started at the 153 mark of the first period. It was Gus Ford. He was on a tip in. A, a pass from Roman Kramer just got thrown across the crease. And there to be able to on the doorstep with the tip in was Gus Ford. He tied us up at one. The 153 mark on the assist from Roman Kramer and Tucker Firth, who both pick up points on the assist. And then just a few minutes later at the 308 mark, it was an interception at the blue line by John Batita. He was able to get the puck deflected, be able to glove it, bring it down, and be able to walk all the way in and be able to deke out Christian Pavlos to be able to give the Thunderbirds the lead. That made it two to one as Batita got his first goal of the season, his first point as well. And then later on, the Thunderbirds went back to the power play, and it was another penalty called against Christian Pavlos, who has four penalty minutes here tonight after he was called for leaving the crease. That was what the call was at the end of the first period when there was a skirmish right after the buzzer sounded. And then he was called for a high sticking at the 11.01 mark, and Gus Ford is able to make him pay once again after... A shot was deflected, he made the initial save, but the rebound bounced around and it came out on the far side and Gus Ford was there and he was just able to slot it home as he made it 3-1 to one. and then a little later on. How about Dominic Dumas? Healthy scratch last night, tonight on the second line with Jan Salak and Kessler Sky and he was able to just work one in from the near dot and he just snapped one that was able to go through the almost the armpit of Pavlos as it snuck through him. He got a piece of it but he didn't get all of it as it snuck through for Dominic Dumas' first career professional goal as well as the first career professional point for Jordan Papa who is credited with the assist at the 1848 mark of the second period and that is made it a four 4-1 game after that first period goal by Hunter Hall. Hunter Hall, he's had both goals for Blue Ridge here this evening, but for the Thunderbirds, it was a big second period, and as Josh Keplinger said at the top of the second, once it started, once you get one, they all start to kind of come trickling in. That was a dominant second period as ever by this Carolina Thunderbirds team, and now they're going to try to be able to go out and do more of the same in the third. They're out shooting Blue Ridge 30-18, to and they're leading by three, four to one. We'll step aside and come back and update you on how the rest of the FPHL looks on this Saturday evening. A couple games going on, Danbury and Binghamton, and one that we're watching. We'll be back after this. Take a look on Thunderbirds TV. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Saft, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997. 
puts the real in realtor. And she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. What's up everybody? Back here in Winston-Salem in the second intermission report. It's a 4-1 Thunderbirds lead over the Blue Ridge Bobcats here in the home opener of the 2023-2024 season. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV. Once again, no WTOB here this evening due to conflicts with high school football last night, then East Carolina football this evening. We're taking a look around the rest of the FPHL. We'll start with that one we had our eye on back in the first intermission. It's Danbury and Binghamton from the Danbury Arena in Danbury, Connecticut, where the Thunderbirds were just a week ago. And now, coming up next weekend, they'll be heading on the road to go see Binghamton from uh, in Binghamton next weekend for a two-game set against the Black Bears, who have come out with the highest points total so far this season. Right now, though, Danbury only six shots through the first almost 30 minutes of the game. They're being outshot by Binghamton 23 to six, but still it is scoreless in that one. A lot of penalties as well, but so far for Danbury, their netminder on the evening is Connor McCollum. He saved 24 of 24. He's the one that stood on his head last Saturday night against the Thunderbirds and was able to pick up a 2-1 victory. That is still the only blemish on the season so far for the Thunderbirds who are trying to close out points 7, 8, and 9 here this evening. Binghamton and Danbury, they are tied scoreless from the Danbury Arena in Danbury, Connecticut. Taking a look at the one other game for the FPHL this evening, it's Elmira and Motor City. And Motor City starting to run away with that one at the midway mark of the third period. It's Motor City leading the Elmira River Sharks by a score of four to one. A pair of goals in the first, pair of goals in the second for Motor City who are out shooting Elmira 31 to 26. Rocco Dia Costanza, Mike Quinn, Declan Conway, and Scott Kawash. The goals for Motor, Motor City in that one. But ours here, good one so far through the first 40 minutes. It's Carolina four and Whitville one. We'll come back with the third period after this on Thunderbirds TV. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day, and go birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 Hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com.
Welcome back to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's a four to one lead for the Carolina Thunderbirds over the Blue Ridge Bobcats here on a Saturday night in the home opener as the officials retake the ice to the corners of Booz. So uh, Steve Harrison, Damian Poole, and Josh Linville also make their way back out to their bench as the Thunderbirds are set to come out of their dressing room over in the far corner for the final 20 minutes of this one here in the home opener in 2023-24. If you're not here at the Annex, pleasure to have you along for the ride here on Thunderbirds TV. Brendan Riley with you, getting set to bring you the final 20 minutes, and we'll just reset things here as we get close to the start of the third. Scoring started in the first period, and the one goal the only goal for Withville here tonight. That was Hunter Hall on assist from Josh Newberg and Dominic Matonic. That made it one to nothing in favor of Blue Ridge. They went into the dressing room with a one nothing lead as the Thunderbirds make their way back out onto the ice. They're trying to close out their third victory on the year. And in that second period, it was all Carolina. Four unanswered goals. Gus Ford from Roman Kramer and Tucker Firth at the 153 mark. John Batiet on a breakaway at the 308, made it two to one. And then after that, Gus Ford again, he was just in the right place at the right time, going to the net, and good things happen as he gets the goal his second of the night from Tucker Firth and Kessler Sky. Then Dominic Dumas from Jordan Popoff at the 1848 mark. Both of them getting their first points in their professional careers. And Dominic Dumas getting his first goal in his professional career. Mario Cavalieri saved, has saved 17 of 18 shots here this evening. Christian Pavlos has saved 26 out of 30. And it looks like we are going to have a goalie change here for the start of the third period. It looks like it is going to be Connor Green. Looks like he's going to be taking over as Wojtek Zemlika has made a change in net. So we're set for the start of the third period here from Winston-Salem. Thunderbirds trying to close this one out. And for the faceoff is Selick. Opposed Gus Ford is now a late line change attempt by Blue Ridge. It's sent away as Blue Ridge wins the faceoff. We're underway here in the third period as the pass comes all the way down. No icing as this one's played off the near half boards to Danny Martin from Cavalier. Selick can't hang on to it as it bounces around. Now out comes Gus Ford. Ford across the red line now into the attacking zone. Tries to go through the legs of a defenseman, but Kramer is a, isn't able to get there. Puck bouncing around on the far side. Ivanov backhands it back out to the half boards. Where it's played back out to center ice and Danny Martin. Martin walks over the blue line against Joe Kennedy. His pass goes wanting as now it takes a deflection. Puck still bouncing around behind the net. Somehow that one got all the way through and it comes all the way back out to the point. McGuire walks in a shot and that one goes wide on the far side. Smirnov back out to the high slot. Martin's shot goes wide as Kennedy, he comes away with it on the backhand and now we'll get poke checked back. Early attacking zone pressure. For the Bobcats here in this third period, as Clay Keeley is able to get this one over to Joe Kennedy, who will try to recollect. He's got Matonic coming right at him as he throws this one up, and it hits off against the stanchion right over by Anthony Butrico, over by the blue line and the Thunderbirds bench. And we come to our first stoppage, just 59 seconds into this third period. So a faceoff will come to the right of Mario Cavalieri. So tonight has saved 18 of 19. He has been great so far this year. Most goals he's given up has been two. Both of them, both of those games were in Danbury. Last night saved 30 of 31. As Granquist is in for the faceoff against Kessler Sky. Granquist is tossed out, and so now that will bring in. Paul, who is able to force the face off behind the net and comes out to the near side. Jan Salak plays it on the back end. Kessler Sky into the neutral zone. Walks in up the near half boards on McGuire. Angles him off as he holds him and now brings it back out. Loses an edge before the puck bounces around once again. It ends up right by Sky down and getting jammed into the ice. 
still is able to get a stick to it as the puck bounces around more. Comes back out to the point. A shot from Firth goes wide on the far side and comes out to the near half boards. Has a nice job stepping up by the forecheck by Gregory Felder as he runs into a man, leaving it for Sky in the near corner. He tries to get it back out, but Ivanov is able to close it off before Salak once again going into the corner. Coming away with it is Kessler Sky. Just throws one out to the near dot. Matonic knocks it away. Now here comes Blue Ridge in transition with Hall. Hall across the blue line up the near half boards into the near corner before he gets turned around and brings it back out. Nice job. And he runs into two red sweaters before the puck bounces to McGuire. Has it on the back. Can't far dot. Throws one in the slot. A lot of bodies in front. Puck gets bounced away over to the far point where Wells will play it on the back and wrap it around. A tie up once again, coming away with it is Hall. Hall runs into Felder, who's able to come in and slocks there to clean it up as the Thunderbirds still trying to clear the zone. 17.47 left to go in the third period with Carolina, 4-1 lead. Hall out from behind his own net, back out to the point. Gets it back to Hall before the pass goes down and there's a Hall goes down to the ice. He was trying to sell a tripping call, but he didn't get it. It's now be dumped in and the Thunderbirds will go off for a change as the man giving chase is Tucker Firth before Wells. He goes down to the ground, back at center ice. A good hit there by Tucker Firth as he sent Tristan Wells down to the ground with Jacob Schnapp in the mess as well. Roman Kramer back out to the point to Curtis Hagee. Hagee walks in back over to Kramer. Kramer leaves it off for Hagee now gets poked away. Now here comes Danny Martin. Danny Martin coming in. He has pop off right on him and he goes down to the ground and takes a check from Cavalieri. A shot goes wide into the near point. There to pick it up is Ivanov. Ivanov will just throw it in front. Puck passing around. It's loose on the far side. Cavalier is able to close off the short side. A big save there by Mario Cavalier. Makes it, keeps it 4-1. to one. Now here come the Thunderbirds. Three on two. Matina near dot. Throws one in the slide. But it bounces back out to Hagee. He'll throw one high over the, over the bar. Now a puck is thrown in on green. And it's saved off into the corner. Petita throws it back out in front, a shot. And a shoulder save off the stick of Roman Kramer by Connor Green. A good opportunity there for Kramer. Had a pair of goals last night in his first game in the FPHL. He had one on his first shift. And then got one right before the buzzer sounded at 19.59 in the second period. 16.33 left to go here in period number three. The Thunderbirds, a four to one lead. Gus Ford has got two tonight. And he's in for the faceoff. It's won by Blue Ridge and played back to Ivanov behind his own net. Gets it back out to Matonic, but he ends up missing it as it goes right by his skate. This one goes all the way down for icing. They'll bring up another offensive zone faceoff for this Thunderbirds first line. The Thunderbirds still. Trying to put the pressure on. It was some early sustained offensive zone time for this Blue Ridge team over the first few minutes as now we have a stoppage. As Damian Poole, the trainer, makes his way over into the corner trying to go grab something from the dressing room for this Thunderbirds team. A short man here tonight. No Peter Panacek, no Yuri Pashtuka. Panacek was suspended for one game after last night, and then Pashtuka out tonight with an undisclosed injury as Baker runs into Matonic on the near side. Jan Salak will put a check on him, but it looks like that is going to be a penalty, or rather an offside call. We'll bring up a neutral zone faceoff with 16-14 left to go here in this third period. And for the faceoff is Newberg, Josh Newberg up against Gus Ford. Some different lines out there for the Thunderbirds right now as Jan Salak has joined the first line for Roman Kramer. Salak now in for the faceoff after Ford was tossed out. And it's won by Newberg. And we'll just dump it in right in on Cavalier. He'll parry it off to the far corner. Or Joe Kennedy will bang it off the glass. It's one of those patented annex bounces. It comes all the way back out to center ice for its played cross ice. And now a dump in that Kennedy is able to knock down. So Nezov dumping it in, and now Clay Keeley has it in the near corner. Tries to play one out, puck stays in the zone, as Sealuck comes away with it, walks into the far dot, now spins his way back out and goes down. Gus Ford going into the boards with him as the puck bounces free. It's Stevens trying to throw it on net. Pass doesn't get all the way through as Newberg now will just send one back out to a vacant point as it comes back out as the D-man was off for a change. Delcart late getting back on 
as Newberg will just rattle this one off the boards and Cavalier will leave it for Joe Kennedy as now both sides go off for a change here with 15.26 to go in the third period. A 4-1 advantage for the Carolina Thunderbirds. Here on opening night trying to go to 3-1-0 before heading to Binghamton next weekend. Matina gets a stick to it as this one's dumped in into the near corner. Kessler Sky plays it on the back end of Dominic Dumas. There's Dumas. It's tangled up by McGuire as the puck now bounces free. They're trying to get it up as Danny Martin leaves it now for Smirnov. Smirnov walks it all the way across. And back to collect is Gregory Felder. Felder plays it back and now will have to go back to retreat as Tucker Firth sent it right by him. Tatsita, the captain, a goal here tonight. Now get it back to his defenseman, Tucker Firth, and now the Thunderbirds will reset with 14.40 left to go here in the third period. And a great crowd all night. They're an opening night, a sellout crowd here in Winston-Salem. You heard Kerry Ross talk about it during the first intermission. It was a sellout last night. Up the far side, Dumas will dump it in. It'll bang up against the boards. Back to collect is McGuire. McGuire's been in a lot of skirmishes here this weekend as it's taken away by Kessler Sky. Sky plays it off the boards out to Firth, a one timer and a save by Green. Matita collects the rebound though, and now will backhand it back in into the far corner as Sky. He goes to work against Newberg. His puck bounces around once again. Newberg goes down to a knee trying to get it, but Baker goes down to pick it up. Matita in the far corner, back out to the point. Hagee will now play it back down. It goes under the skate of Matita, but comes out into the near corner to Dawson Baker who gets it back to the captain John Batita behind the net he goes to work against McGuire just fending him off throws it back out on the near side of the goal line Baker on the near half board trying to get one to four but brings it back out and go, goes cross ice into the far corner as Batita chases after Wells it's a turnover behind the net it's now McGuire and Batita get turned get twisted up. He Heggie will just throw it on net. Puck goes wide, ends up behind the net, and it goes through the skates of Bettina. Now it is eventually cleared. A long, sustained offensive zone pressure there for the Thunderbirds as Hall walks in, and now it gets poked away. But Tonic will just throw it across the crease. Cavalier parries it away, and now coming away with it is Gus Ford as now he tries to start the break. One on four. Already working with two goals tonight. A shot, and a save by Green as it comes out in the near side. Kramer is able to come away with it. He leaves it on the far side. Pop off a shot. And now it gets deflected wide. Ford tries to throw it out back in front of the net. But coming away with it is Nicoletti. Nicoletti now at the near dot. Will now walk it through center ice and into the neutral zone. Still weaving his way through. Leaves it for Sealek. Sealek a shot and a save by Cavallari. Standing up. He got his chest to it. And now the puck bounces back out to center ice. Now here comes Kramer with Gus Ford. Blue Ridge gets back on defense. And now a drop pass. Back to Popoff who steps in. Runs into Stevens before it's brought back out to center ice. And now here it comes comes up the near side, Newberg. Newberg will just throw it in on Cavalieri and he'll cover with 12.32 left to go here in the third period. Keeley and Volk make their way back out of the boxes after their five minute majors. And we'll take a timeout, four to one, the Thunderbirds in front here in the third on Thunderbirds TV. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts traveling all over setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day and go birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Back here in the third period with 12.32 left to go. Here in this one from the Annex. It's the Thunderbirds four and the Blue Ridge Bobcats one. Of course, the third period all season long is brought to you by Boston and Crutchfield. So face off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. It has it's one back to Ivanov. Ivanov from the point, I'll just throw it on net. That one was to get all the way through, and that one's deflected up into the protective netting. Want we'll to see who it hit off of. 
It looks like a last touch to Thunderbird, so it'll stay a defensive zone faceoff for Carolina. It's Dominic Dumas, who already has a goal tonight, his first professional goal for the Boise Idaho native in for the draw. Losing a quick shot by Smirnoff, blocked by Clay Keeley. And it's cleared back out to center ice. Ravinov backs up and goes cross ice. It'll be dumped in. Cavalieri will play it and hold it behind his own net as Joe Kennedy now tries to get it back up the board. Schnapp battles for it over on the far half boards. And now Kennedy, he once again has it before he just flick it back down as he takes a late hit there in his defensive zone. This one goes all the way down. It'll be called for icing. So right now, kind of looking like it's the last stand for... Blue Ridge as they're trying to get some more attacking zone pressure. The Thunderbirds defense, they have been terrific all season. It was a 4-1 win last night. Currently the score holds the same right now with 12.03 left to go here in this third period. Grandquist and Dumas in for the faceoff off the icing. It's one by Grandquist back out to the point. He'll be rattled around the boards. He goes just past the wanting stick and comes out on the near side as Stevens will wrap it back around. And in there first is Clay Keeley, plays it up to Dominic Dumas before a tie-up, and now Stevens. Stevens whacking at it as it comes out on the far side. As Puck continues to bounce around, Thunderbirds can't clear their zone, a close angle shot and a save by Cavalieri. Puck was still loose on the near side, but Jan Slock was there to clean up the rebound. And now a long stretch pass up to Jacob Schnapp, who's in, all alone. Schnapp walks it in, save, rebound attempt. Puck still loose in front of the net, a tie-up. And they say he covered it. And now some more extracurriculars. Jacob Schnapp was in all alone. What a beautiful move on Connor Green, but Green was still able to say it, the, save it the second attempt. And another save and then another face-off called as now Schnapp is still tied up there. Schnapp still talking to McGuire, Granquist. We've seen Schnapp talking a lot here tonight. He'll make his way back to the bench to an applause from this sold out crowd. So offensive zone face off. Gus Ford in, working on two goals tonight. It's a tie up as Newberg goes down to the ice and the puck bounces free over on the far side. And now a quick stick lift by Dawson Baker. It keeps it in the zone, but now the Thunderbirds will drop back and it'll be dumped in cross corner. Cavalier will play this one and goes to the opposite corner to Tucker Firth. Firth plays it back for Felder who loses his footing. The puck rattles around to the near half boards, and there Kramer is able to step through a defender, but the puck bounces back, and is now clear back out to center ice, and here comes Gus Ford. Ford with Newberg on him, leaves it for Baker, and now the two run into each other, but Kramer a shot, and that one sails high. Ford in the near corner. Cross corner to Baker before it comes back to Ford once again. Gets poke check, and is able to stand to hit, and now said, what a Kramer a shot, and a pad saved by Green. And that will be cleared back up. That one will go into the crowd. It looks like it didn't take a deflection. And it looks like that should be a delay of game. So that should send the Thunderbirds to the power play, and it will. So David Nicoletti is going to be called for delay of game after he tried to clear it. And it didn't take a deflection, didn't hit the glass. And so for the fifth time this evening, the Carolina Thunderbirds are going on the power play. Here at 10.35 left to go in this one. Gus Ford, he'll be in for the faceoff. Here against Sealek. he's already got two power play goals here tonight. Faceoff is won by Sealek and played into the far corner. Delcart is able to whack it back out as Volf leaves it for Selec and Volf gets it right back over by the far blue line in front of the Thunderbirds bench. A tangle up as now Ford is able to just whistle this one back in and Tucker Firth will reset here with 10.17 left to go. 1.40 left to go on the two minute minor for delay a game by David Nicoletti. 
A long stretch pass. Baker will get a piece of it as this one gets dumped all the way in. Over on the far side, it's Kramer. The lefty plays it off the boards, back to Baker, walking along the blue line, surveying Kramer now from the high slot. A shot and a blocker save by Green. It gets poked all the way back out and it gets knocked down as Baker will just play this one behind his net. Cavalieri, yeah, he's in some trouble as now he get, gets taken away behind the net, but Baker there to recover. Here is a, about a minute gone here on this power play. Now here come the Thunderbirds. Ford will play it near side. Kramer walks in. Walking in with Kessler Sky. Gets it over to Sky. A save by Green. And it's cleared all the way back down. A lot of good opportunities for the Thunderbirds this period. But Connor Green, he has stood up to the task so far as this one comes all the way back down to Ivanov and he'll dump this one all the way back out to center ice. With 39 seconds to go on the man advantage. 9-11 to go here in the third period. Jan Salak walks over the blue line and an offside is called as looked like Dumas was just a half second in front of the Czech native. So just under nine and a half minutes to go here in Winston-Salem. Thunderbirds on the power play still for the next 33 seconds when we come back with a 4-1 lead on Thunderbirds TV. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Thunderbirds still on the power play for the next 33 seconds after the two minute minor for delay game by David Nicoletti. There'll be a neutral zone face off after the Thunderbirds are called for off side. Update from that game in Binghamton, it's the Black Bears leading Danbury now by a score of three to nothing. Saw those shots on goal. Back there in the second intermission, it was 24 to six. It was only a matter of time before Binghamton finally broke through. And much like the Thunderbirds did here tonight, The goals, they just start coming. 9.07 left to go here in the third period. Salak loses the neutral zone faceoff. It's poked back out, though, to Clay Keeley. Goes to defense's partner, Joe Kennedy, who will just whack one around the boards as it rattles all the way to Jacob Schnapp on the near side. Plays it back out to Clay Keeley. Goes cross ice to Kennedy. Kennedy walks in top of the dot. Thinks about a shot, but thinks better as he had a, had a man in front of him. Now he'll just cycle. Brings it back out. Sets up a one timer for Keeley. It goes off the glove. A rebound attempt, no good. And it comes back out on the near side. Kennedy can't keep it in on the pass from Schnapp. With seven seconds left to go here on the man advantage. Keeley now with one last rush on the power play. Keeley walks in trying to drop it off for Schnapp. Puck gets bounced around and Salak comes away the near corner. Man out of the box and a shot. And that one's blocked. Good block by Volf in the high slot on the stick off the stick of Dumas. Now a tie up over on the far side and it's poked free. And now here comes Blue Ridge up the far side. And Grantquist gets ran into by Jacob Schnapp who has just been all over the ice this evening. It won't show up in the score sheet but he has had a huge physical factor in this one. And now a pass from Kennedy goes all the way down. And it'll be called for icing as Delcart was just in front of Nate Keeley. So 8.09 left to go here in the third. It's a 4-1 lead for the Thunderbirds trying to close out their third win on the victory. They move to 3-1-0 on the season before setting up a date with the Binghamton Black Bears coming up next Friday and Saturday from Binghamton, New York. That power play for the Thunderbirds, of course, brought to you by Little Italy Pizza and Family Restaurant in Rural Hall. The faceoff is one on the far side. Vault goes to work against Clay Keeley. And coming away with it now is his twin brother, Nate Keeley. Vault and the Keeley twins jammed up against the far corner. Puck still cannot get out from there as now looks like a stick is down. It comes back out to the point. Cross ice, McGuire walks in. Top of the dot. His shot gets blocked and goes up into the netting. With 7.43 remaining here in period number three. So taking a look ahead, those two games coming up next Friday and Saturday from Binghamton. 
Game one on Friday, that's a 7 p.m. puck drop from the Visions Veterans Memorial. As the defensive zone faceoff is one on for a second as Heggie gets it taken away behind the net in the corner. Heggie up the near side, he runs into a man as now Petita comes away with it, he'll walk it across the ice. And now Nate Keeley walks in, a man on his back, spins around, throws it in front for Petita, can't control it, now he does on the far dot before bringing it back out to the far corner, loses an edge, and now coming away with it is Blue Ridge. Up the far side, a good hit there by Jordan Popoff as it's dumped in by Hall. Puck bouncing around out by the blue line. It's able to clear the zone, and that's going to look like it's going to be a tripping as the arm is up, and Connor Green waiting to head to the penalty box, or rather to his bench, but Petita is able to touch it, and so... Kessler Sky will go off for two minutes for a trip here with 7.01 left to go in the third period. Looks like Wojtek Zemlika is going to use a timeout. So 7 p.m. coming up on Friday from Binghamton, and then it'll be 7 o'clock again on Saturday for the second of that one up in Binghamton. As the Thunderbirds chance to go into that one, 3-0-1-1 with nine points on the season. It's been a fun one here tonight. Sold out crowd, it was the hottest ticket in town. Fans showed up, and the Thunderbirds gave them a lot to cheer about, especially during that second period. With four unanswered goals, still sitting on that. Gus Ford sitting on two goals. He had two last weekend, rather last Friday in Danbury. He hit the bar in Danbury as well, or else he would have had a hat trick in his first game back this season. And now still sitting on it. So a two-minute minor for Kessler Sky. Two minutes for tripping. So the Thunderbirds now trying to kill off yet another penalty this season. So far they are perfect 10 for 10 on the year. So face off to the left of Mario Cavallari, Newberg in against Gus Ford. Ford wins it, but a man steps in for Blue Ridge and it comes back to Agnezov at the point. Goes cross ice. Held on the far side before coming near side to Matonic. Matonic back to the point. Agnezov walking in to the far corner. Still not a lot so far here in the first 20 seconds of this power play. Blue Ridge just setting up the cycle. Back out of the point. Agnezov a shot. That was going to get all the way through as that one's blocked and cleared all the way down by Gus Ford. Thunderbirds two for two tonight, 10 for 10 on the season on the penalty kill coming into tonight. Blue Ridge only 10% on the power play. Matonic will backhand this one in over into the near corner. Newberg walks in, a shot from the dot, sails wide. Cavalier had the blocker side cover as that one comes all the way back out to center ice. Blue Ridge looking for a change. Thunderbirds still keeping them out there. But Keeley, Batita, Clay Keeley, and Gregory Felder. Walking through center ice, a backhand pass to the far side. Newberg will just backhand this one in as the change is completed. Cavalieri shovels this one back up to the far half boards. Trying to clear it as Felder. He can as now he runs into two Bobcats and comes out onto the near side. Tangle up over by the official in the corner as Nate Keeley goes in battling against Hunter Hall. who's already got two goals here this weekend. He's got the only two goals. This one zipped all the way back down the length of the ice, 200 feet and cleared with 30 seconds to go here in this penalty kill for the Thunderbirds. Inside five and a half minutes to go here in the third period. Coming up the near side. Ivanov will send this one in. It was deflected as Cavalieri out from his crease. He'll go and leave it for Kennedy who plays it off the glass. And this one sent all the way down once again. With nine seconds to go here on the penalty kill for the Thunderbirds. Up the far side, Danny Martin going up against Jan Salak. As the penalty has been killed off, Kessler Sky out of the box. This one zipped back down. Sky just out of the box. It'll be the first one down. No icing. Sky with fresh legs in the corner. Run into by Ivanov as he leaves it for Salak. Salak gets body by McGuire and it comes back to Volt. But the Thunderbirds now 11 for 11 on the penalty kill here in 2023-24. McGuire across his own blue line, drops it back for Ivanov. He gets it right back to the D-men. 
They'll be dumped in and rattle around the boards. See Tucker Firth in the near corner. Firth will just send this one down. This one will go for icing. I'm not sure you realize we're back to five on five. Here at 4.22 left to go in the third period. That'll bring us to our final media timeout. Thunderbirds getting set to wrap this one up. When we come back here on Thunderbirds TV, 4 to 1, Carolina in front. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech. Your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker. One with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Thunderbirds try to close this one out. Here in the third period, leading four to one over the Blue Ridge Bobcats and sweep this home and home set after a 4-1 win last night. And now trying to get a 4-1 win here tonight. 4-22 remains between the Thunderbirds in a 3-1-0 record. Newberg in for the faceoff. And a tie up as Dumas skip, kicks it over on the near side. Tucker Firth is tangled up against Hunter Hall. He comes out to Joe Kennedy. He plays it to Dawson Baker. Baker leaves it for Dumas, who walks his way across center ice. He got his first goal of his career back in the second period. Goes cross ice, getting to Gus Ford over by the far hashes. Ripped all the way around, Dumas into the corner, run into by McGuire, stays on his feet though, throws one out to the high slot, Baker couldn't hit, control it, as now it's played back into the corner. Dumas working his way around the net, brings it back out at the point, Heggie, he'll go cross ice. So Baker will now dump it back in, back to try to clean it up as Delcart runs into two red sweaters and it's back out to the point. D to D pass, Joe Kennedy a one timer and that one sails high of the bar, for there on the, He'll play it back down to Baker, who gets it back over towards Kennedy. Kennedy being pressured, he'll keep this one in the zone as he had Hall coming after him, but a turnover as McGuire now steps through a defender and now walks his way into the attacking zone. McGuire's run into by Joe Kennedy on the near half boards and John Batita. Batita. Pokes it back out, Baker plays it on the backhand now, and now Joe Kennedy, such a forward-minded Defender will now just throw it in on net. Green makes a save with the glove, and he'll cover with 3.04 left to go here in the third period. Looks like Binghamton is going to win. Motor City was in control last we checked as well. And so now the Thunderbirds trying to close this one out here in front of a great crowd here on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. Will be the third line, Batsita, Keeley, and Schnapp in for the faceoff. Tie up, Keeley. Ends up getting it taken away from by Granquist. It's just shoveled back out to center ice. Heggie's able to play it over to Popoff. We'll rattle this one in and a stoppage. And it looks like Heggie's going to get a penalty and head to the penalty box. So the Penalty kill will come out for the fourth time tonight. Five power play chances that the Thunderbirds had converted on two of, and then four chances, three chances rather, for Blue Ridge that the Thunderbirds man will to wipe off every time this year. So Curtis Hagee into the penalty box for two minutes with 2.55 left to go. So he goes off for cross checking. 2.55 left to go, two minutes left to go in this one. Newberg will win the faceoff against Petita, back out to the point. Delcart at the flow logo over to Matonic. He walks in, his shot gets deflected high into the netting.
Thunderbirds out shooting. Blue Ridge 39 to 27 in this one as the tie up on the face off. It's one back, Petita right over Newberg and it looked like Petita got hit high, no call. Newberg goes cross ice to the far high slot. Stevens back in attempt to Matonic and stepping up is Felder and he'll clear this one back out to center ice where Delcart is back to pick up. Delcart. Center ice, Matonic will rattle this one around. Cavalieri will leave it there. For his defenseman, Tucker Firth, who clears it 200 feet all the way down. Green will try to angle off Schnapp as he leaves it for Delcart, who spins back. Thunderbirds go off for a change. Here with 118 left to go on the, on the penalty kill and 210 left to go in this one. Thunderbirds and sets a wrap up. A sweep here this weekend as Hall walks in below the goal line. Gets spun off by Clay Keeley. It's back out to the point. Delcart walks over the top of the point. His shot goes wide. Goes wide. Cavalieri looks like he didn't see that one. Kennedy now a tie up in the corner. Grandquist comes away with it before it squirts free to Hall. Hall from behind the net to Matonic at the near dot. Back out to the point. Delcart surveys, goes far side. A shot, that one didn't get all the way through. Still loose in the slot. Puck bouncing around. And this one will be taken by Gus Ford. Now Ford will start at the ice. Working on two goals already. He walks in, a shot, and that one goes off the leg of Delcart. And goes up into the netting, and it'll bring an offensive zone face off here at 38 seconds left to go on the penalty kill. And only a minute 32 left to go in this one. So the Thunderbirds shorthanded right now, even shorthanded here this evening. After Peter Panacek, he was suspended earlier today for being called an aggressor in last night's contest. And Yuri Pashtuka out as well with an undisclosed injury. Doesn't expect to be long term for Yuri. Face off to the left of Connor Green. Tita in for the draw. One by Blue Ridge in their defensive zone and back to hang on to it is McGuire. McGuire will dump it off on the far side. They come cross ice now across the center ice logo, the Thunderbirds logo as Newberg gets it over to Stevens up the far side. Newberg drops it back. McGuire surveying at the top of the slot. Will go far dot. A centering pass. That one to get all the way through. Cavalier is going one way. Puck went the other. 13 seconds left to go here on the penalty kill. This one comes all the way back down. It's an offensive zone for Blue Ridge. Six seconds and five here on the power play. Heggie again set to come out of the box. So we're under a minute to go here at opening night. Puck squirts free into the middle of the slot. Penalty kill is over. As the lock plays this one back. And fans start to come to their feet here at Winston-Salem. This one will go all the way down for Isaac. So after a first period that saw Blue Ridge in control, the middle 20 minutes were all Thunderbirds. Four unanswered goals over those middle 20. They have set them up now to close out Blue Ridge here this weekend and come away with the sweep. Face off to the left of Cavalieri. Slock in against Selec. Face off is won by Selec. And played by Smirnov. Smirnov in the near corner just throws one off the back of the cage with 35 seconds to go here in the third period. The cowbells start to come to life. And then first back in this one to the far corner. A tangle up, Slock battling around. And the crowd comes to its feet with 22 seconds to go. Here in the third period. Schnapp flies a check, has it at the red line. He'll dump this one in deep with 14. The final seven seconds, Blue Ridge will call off the docks. The Carolina Thunderbirds in their first ever matchup against the Whitfield Blue Ridge Bobcats sweep a home and home set and improve to 3 1 0 this year. Sweet Caroline comes over the speakers as the team goes down to give Mario Cavalieri hugs here this evening after Mario Cavalieri allows only two goals here this weekend, both to Hunter Hall. Last night saved 30 of 31, tonight he saves 27 of 28 as the Thunderbirds come away with a 4-1 victory here this evening. A pair of goals from Gus Ford 
One from John Vitita, his first of the season and the first of the professional career of Dominic Dumas. Thunderbirds dominant here this evening, four to one. They come away with the victory on opening night. We'll be back to wrap this one up after this here on Thunderbirds TV. over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at riddletractor.com. That's riddletractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Back here in Carolina, as the Thunderbirds are mistaken. Their victory lap around the rink here at the Winston-Salem Salem Fairgrounds at the Annex. Thunderbirds victorious here in the home opener of the 2023-24 season with a 4-1 victory over the Blue Ridge Bombcats. Last night a 4-1 win in Whitfield. Tonight a 4-1 victory here in Winston-Salem. Mario Cavalieri played a big part all weekend. He saved 27 of 28 shots here tonight. As we get a look at our three stars here this evening. And the third star is Cavalieri. 27 of 28 saves here tonight. Second star with his first goal and first points of the season is John Butita. After he came away with the breakaway goal in the second period that gave the Thunderbirds the lead and the lead for good as they came away with a four to one victory and the first star here tonight with his second, his second two goal performance this season is Gus Ford. Ford terrific once again here tonight. Right place at the right time. Both goals coming on the power play. And now our three stars get announced here at the rink. And Mario Cavalieri makes his way back out onto the ice. Cavalieri only allowed two goals all weekend. 30 of 31 last night. 27 of 28 here tonight. But now he goes to give a shirt to the fan over in the Four tops down in the near corner. Second star of the evening, John Vitsita. As he had a goal at the 308 mark of the second period that made it two to one. After he was able to come away with a, he was able to come away with a breakaway. He was able to dance in and deke out. Christian Pavlos, the stars tonight. Connor Green did play the third period. And then, Gus Ford, he tied us up at one. On the power play at the 153 mark of the second period, and then later made it three to one and really started to put the nail in the coffin at the 12-12 mark with another power play goal. So a good one here tonight for the Carolina Thunderbirds after they're able to sweep the weekend set here against the Blue Ridge Bombcats. Last night, four to one, tonight, four to one. And the Thunderbirds victorious as they come away with six points on the weekend and now have nine points as they get set to head to Binghamton coming up this Friday and Saturday night from the Visions Veterans Memorial. Seven o'clock puck drop for both of those games. We're getting coverage starting about 15 to 20 minutes right before that. So it'll be a good one coming up as Binghamton now leaves set at 17 points on the season after they were up big over Danbury there earlier on tonight. But that'll do it for us here on opening night here in 2023-2024 for the great production staff working behind the scenes.
Jack O'Connell, Logan Allen, and Caleb Blazier, and everyone else here that was able to put this broadcast together here tonight. I'm Brendan Riley signing off for the final time here this evening. Thunderbirds victorious 4-1 to one over the Blue Ridge Bombcats. Come on back for the Coach's Show with the Coach Harry Show coming up on Tuesday at King's Cradshack, and then the Thunderbirds in Binghamton next weekend. This has been a production of Thunderbirds Hockey on Thunderbirds TV.